his fifth year as the OSU coach. Today will lead his team against the unanimous number one team in the country, the University of Nebraska, coached by Tom Osborne in his 11th year. The Cornhuskers are rated by many as one of the best college teams ever. The Cowboys today will try for the major upset. Back at Lewis Field in Stillwater, John Snyder along with Terry Brown. Ed Murray is down on the sidelines. The University of Nebraska against Oklahoma State. The weather conditions today, cloudy skies. The winds out of the east at 20 miles an hour. The temperature 64. The humidity 89%, a little bit high on humidity, a chance of rain. We hope it stays away. Other than that, a great day for football. Nebraska, as you know, is ranked number one in the country unanimously. Many are saying this Nebraska team is quite possibly the greatest team in the history of college football. But, Terry, one thing, there is a question mark about their defense. They probably have a great defense. It's just that they haven't had to prove it yet. Well, that's true. And also, their defensive line average is only 228. And that's why the Cowboys have got to be able to move the ball against these guys because that uh, that's a a defense that we can move on and we get, we've got to keep the ball away from them. And the Cowboys will get their chance to move on that defense because Oklahoma State won the toss and the Cowboys will take the football to start the game here at Lewis Field this afternoon. In the series between the two teams, which started in 1960, Nebraska has dominated, winning 22, losing two. There's been one tie. That was in 1973. Oklahoma State won the first two games of this series back in 1960 and 61. Bob Devaney became the coach at Nebraska in 1962. As you look at Turner Gill, the great Nebraska quarterback, and of course, Devaney built up a great program, and Tom Osborne has continued that tradition. You know, in Tom Osborne's 10 years, John, he has been in 10 bowl games. He's uh, the worst he's finished in the Big Eight was second, and that was the year that we had a three-way tie for first. Absolutely, that was the year that Oklahoma State tied for first in 1976. If Tom Osborne wins the game this afternoon, he will have 102 victories at Nebraska, which is one more than Bob Devaney had in his coaching career. So there's a man right there who's continued a great tradition. Tom Osborne has a lot of talent. He has a lot of character himself, and, and his players display that as they go on the field. Tom Osborne, very active in the Fellowship Christian Athletes, and a uh, pretty good coach, too. Ed Jimmy Johnson has done an excellent job here at Oklahoma State. Jimmy in his fifth year, his record against the rest of the Big Eight Conference, excluding Oklahoma and Nebraska is 15-3-2, so he's done very, very well against the rest of the league, and he'd love to pull off the upset today or perhaps next week against the Sooners. Livingston will do the kicking off. Scott Livingston will kick off for Nebraska. But the deep men for Oklahoma State as we'll catch him for you down at the end of the field. Set to go, the referee is Howard Rowe. The umpire is Robert Holliday, Frank Ellis. Sam Mathis is the line judge. The field judge is Gerald Kleinsmith, Tom Pink, and Virgil Deering also officials in the game today. That's Bobby Riley, the freshman out of Stroud, who kneels in the end zone, and the Cowboys will start first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. We'll see if they're able to control the football and move it. You remember the second half of the Texas A&M game, the Cowboys came out and controlled the ball for something like eight and a half, nine minutes. There's the offensive line at Oklahoma State. Malcolm Lewis, of course, is split in. John Segelski, Kevin Igo, David Tucker, Ralph Partita, Paul Blair, and John Chesley is the tight end. At the backfield for Oklahoma State, Rusty Hilger, of course, is the quarterback. Sean Jones will be a tailback. And the fullback will be Kelly Cook. Ernest Anderson, the great running back who led the nation in rushing a year ago, will not play in the game today. He's not played in the last four games because of a muscle tear in his leg. Harris is the man who goes in motion to the left side. The give straight ahead to Jones. Left side, a gain of perhaps a, a yard, maybe less. Nebraska had several people in there on the tackle. You know, one thing about the big tight end, John Chesley, Coach Johnson feels that his biggest asset is his blocking, not pass receiving. Some people wonder why they don't throw the ball to him. Bill Weber, Mike Keeler, Mike Tramner, Rob Stuckey, Scott Strasburger across the front line for the University of Nebraska. Linebackers Mark Dom and Mike Knox. There are, there are nine underclassmen starting on this Nebraska defense. There are nine seniors starting on the offense. Neil Harris, Mike McCashlin, Brett Clark, and Dave Burke in the defensive backfield for Nebraska. Rusty Hilcher comes to the line, sees something he does not like. He wants to talk to Jimmy Johnson. We'll be back right after this. It will be. John Snyder along with Terry Brown and Ed Murray is down on the field. We'll hear from him momentarily as the Cowboys are back in. They took a very quick timeout as Rusty Hilger went over to talk with Jimmy Johnson. The Cowboys will work now second and nine from their own 21-yard line against the Nebraska defense. We're just underway in the fifth game of the season for Oklahoma State. The sixth for Nebraska. It's complete to Harris, a gain of about five to the 26-yard line. He is tackled quickly out there by the outstanding safety of Nebraska, Brett Clark. Jamie Harris just ran down and curled in and kind of fell in behind those linebackers. That's what you need to do against the 5'10". Just find that opening seam and try to wait for that quarterback to get the ball to you. 
first third down play of the day. It is third and three for the Cowboys at the, their own 27-yard line. They, of course, have to get out to the 30 as they took the ball at the 20 to start the drive. Just underway, 13 minutes, 51 seconds to go in the first quarter. Oklahoma State at 4-0, Nebraska at 5-0. Kelly Cook, the pitch is to Sean Jones. On the left side, he won't make the first down. Gets back to the line of scrimmage, perhaps loses a yard. Nebraska defense in there, gang tackling, and the Cowboys will have to punt the ball away. One of the things we've seen all year, John, is the defense is against the Cowboys stack. They get up, their defensive secondary is playing about five to six yards deep. John Conway is on to do the punting for Oklahoma State, averaging just over 43 yards a kick. He punted nine times last week against Tulsa kicked very well. As a matter of fact, his kicking was definitely a factor in the Oklahoma State 9-0 win over the Hurricane. High kick comes down to about the 30-yard line. That's Irving Fryer, the wing back of Nebraska, who is snowed under by the Oklahoma State punting unit. And the Huskers will take over first and 10 right at their own 30-yard line. John, it's a good thing they got there because the, the Cornhuskers had a tremendous wall set up on this right side. Nebraska will start out first and 10 at its own 30. This is an offense that is number one in the nation. Total offense, 585 yards a game. Rushing offense, 420 yards a game. And scoring, averaging nearly 58 points a game. They've outscored the opponents, 289 to 56. Turner Gill is the quarterback. Behind him, Mike Rogier. And the pitch goes to Rogier. He is tackled behind the line of scrimmage. Tremendous play in there by the Oklahoma State defensive end number of people in there for the Cowboys. I tell you what, if anybody thought that the Cowboys were not going to be fired up today, I think they're wrong because the, out, the Cowboy defense there on that right the offensive line for the Cornhuskers, John. Leslie O'Neill and James Ham were in there to make the stop. The loss was two. Mark Shulin is the fullback. Turner Gale drops the throw and the man who's in there to make the stop is Chris Watkins. The uh, Cowboys are going to blitz the secondary. That's obvious. Rockins coming in from the cornerback position really blasted Gill. He did not have time to even set up to throw the ball. They're going to obviously gamble a little bit defensively. They did that time. Rockins, is, Rockins needs only one more tackle now to move into seventh place on the all-time Oklahoma State tackle list. As the Huskers come back to the line now, the Cowboys have got him in a third and 20 situation. Turner Gill, the quarterback. Mark Schullen, the fullback. The tailback is Mike Rozier, right now the leading candidate for the Heisman Trophy. Gill obviously looking to throw. Under some pressure, he is tackled down there. He wanted Fryer, he wanted Fryer the uh, great wing back, and uh, he was covered extremely well, and the quarterback just couldn't throw it. It was Mike Hudson who made the play for Oklahoma State, number 10, the freshman out of Hominy, who was playing in the place of Harry Roberts, who has a shoulder bruise and is not expected to play today. So a great play by the freshman. So the Cowboys on a couple of straight plays have sent the uh, cornerbacks and the defensive backs in there on the quarterback, and they've played well defensively. It's fourth and 28 for Nebraska. Livingston in his own end zone will do the punting. Ooh. High snap carries back inside the Cowboy 35. Bobby Riley with a football to the left side. He'll go out of bounds at about the 36-yard line. So the Pokes defensively did a great job against the Nebraska offense, and there's a flag on the play. Well, the guy, the defensive player on that last play that had coverage on Fryer was number 23, Tony Presley. He's listed as a tailback, but he was playing defensive back. He was playing defensive, the defensive drop-in position. Presley's in that defensive end position. Uh, Warren Thompson, who starts a defensive end for Oklahoma State, not playing today because of a shoulder bruise, may play a little bit, but James Hamm has moved to that end, and David Webb has moved to the other end, backed up by Tony Presley. Face mask penalty against Nebraska. That's the kind of breaks we need early, in, uh, the Cowboys need early in this game. Wait for the officials to spot the ball. A lot of people here from Nebraska today, I would guess, they're <laughs> sitting in the, the west end zone. It's all Nebraska, it looks like. I would guess seven or 8,000 people. There's a lot of red. Big break for the Cowboys here. The ball goes inside Nebraska territory to the 49-yard line, and Oklahoma State has excellent field position to start the drive yards, right there. Face mask, kicking team, first down. First down for the Cowboys. Rusty Hilger leads him out. Split to the right side is Malcolm Lewis, the freshman, out of Houston. Kelly Cook is the fullback, and Sean Jones is the tailback. Hilger, the junior, out of Oklahoma City Southeast. The pitch to Jones. Gain of perhaps two as he gets down to around the 46-yard line. What's interesting there, John, they brought their monster man to the wide side of the field, not the strength of the formation. The monster man, or what you might look at as the strong safety, and then the Cowboys ran away from him. 
Bill Weber, Mike Keeler, Mike Tramner, Rob Stuckey, and Scott Strasburger, the defensive line for the University of Nebraska. As we mentioned, nine juniors, Mark Dom and Mike Knox, the linebackers. Nine juniors on this Nebraska defensive unit. Second and eight for Oklahoma State. Jones carried on the first play in this drive for a gain of two. Hilger looks to throw. He does complete to Harris right at the 40-yard line. Jamie Harris, who had caught 16 passes coming into the game, four of them for touchdowns, as his first completion of the day, his first reception. We'll look at it again. As you see this, Jamie Harris, had he not fall, fallen down, he could have easily picked up the first down, but he made a great catch, and the outlaw, the Cowboys, excuse me, are close to a first down. And the Cowboys need two yards for the first down. Now it's just outside the Nebraska 40-yard line. Third and two, 10 minutes and nine seconds to go in the first quarter. Nebraska number one in the country, Oklahoma State number 20. Jones up the middle for the first down and gets inside the 40, down to around the 37. It was not a bad looking hole there, John, and uh, just went right up the middle and picks up the first down. Mike Knox and Scott Strasburg are in on the stop for Nebraska. Cowboys with great field position. First and 10 on the Nebraska, just inside the Nebraska 37 yard line. Oklahoma State averaging 335 yards of total offense per game, 140 yards of that passing, averaging 22 points a game coming in. Hilger calls the plays. Behind him, Kelly Cook and Sean Jones. Good carry by Rusty Hilger. Carry of perhaps six yards out near the 30-yard line. Brett Clark and Mike Knox in on the tackle. The right guard here, Partita, really, you can't see it, but he seals off the inside, and it allows Hilger to, to bust up into that crack and pick up good yardage. It's hard to know from up here whether or not it was actually a call for the quarterback to run. It looked like he had the option to pitch to Jones because he was back there, but Rusty saw the opening, and the gain was five, so it's second and five at the Nebraska 31. Bills are having to scramble. The pass is incomplete, intended for John Chesley. The, the fans <laughs> want an interference. He looked like he reached over him. It was blitz coverage. They were playing a very tight man-to-man. -man. And uh, from our vantage point, it looked like he may have reached over, but that's a judgment call. Brett Clark was the man who was defending against John Chesley, number 88, as John could not make the reception out there right around uh, the 30-yard line. So it'll be a third and five with the ball at the Nebraska 31. Sean Jones and Kelly Cook in the backfield along with Rusty Hilger. Both the receivers split to the left side. Rusty rolls left, looks to throw. He does. He hits Harris out there. Harris out of bounds at about the 22-yard line. And again, it's the Oklahoma State first down. Rusty Hilger was hit there at the last of the play, but he gets the ball out of the flat. Harris has got some running room, gets away from one defender, and then he goes out of bounds, picks up the first, and the Cowboys are on the move. So far, it's been a tremendous offensive performance by Oklahoma State doing exactly what everyone agreed. The coaching staff, the players, uh, the broadcasters, the sports writers, and the fans knew they would have to do, control the football. Clock is moving. Eight minutes, 52 seconds to go now in the first quarter. Oklahoma State first and 10, just outside the Nebraska 20 at the 21. Harrison motion to the right side. Sean Jones, a gain of perhaps four, four and a half, down near the 16-yard line. Sean Jones just goes over left side on good blocking and, and surges for that three and four yards, and that's what the Cowboy offense is trying to maintain is a four-yard average on that first down play. Dave Ryder was in on the stop for Nebraska. Cowboys moving well here in the early going. Oklahoma State trying to run its record to 4-0. Nebraska comes in at 5-0, beating Penn State for the first game of the season. Harris will go to the left side. Malcolm Lewis. The outstanding freshman out of Houston is on the right side. Now Jamie Harris goes in motion to the right. Hilger calls the play. Looks to throw, has to scramble to the right side, maybe forced to run. He does, and he gets back inside the 20, but not back to the line of scrimmage, a loss of perhaps a yard and a half. So Nebraska played very well defensively on that play. It was just a two-man pattern, and they were in their blitz defense again. Anytime you get down around the 15-yard line, you're going to see man coverage. And that's what the Cowboys saw that time. Mike Knox and Bill Weber in on the tackle. Hilger looking at the Oklahoma State bench to find out what play the coaching staff wants him to run. Cowboys at third and seven. If they can't convert right here, undoubtedly we'll see Larry Roach to try and put some points on the board. We're in the first quarter. On the passing situation, Hilger throws over the middle. It's almost intercepted. It is intercepted by Mike Knox, the linebacker. 
he brings it back outside the 20 yard line to perhaps the 21. So it's a big play for Nebraska. It was knocked away by Brett Clark, number 10. Knox came up with the interception and that has to hurt. Kelly Cook made the tackle for Oklahoma State. As we look at the play again, Mike Knox returned one for a touchdown against Penn State in the first game of the season. And it has to be disappointing for the Cowboys as you watch Knox with the interception because they could have had the chance for the three-pointer had they not made the first down. But Nebraska has the ball first and 10 at the Hornhusker 21-yard line. Turner Gill is the quarterback. Mark Schillen is the fullback. Mike Rogier is the tailback. Ahead, this is the fullback. You know, getting back to that last play, Hilger, Hilger just tried to force the ball in there. He had plenty of time to throw the ball. That's too bad. That's the things they need to avoid to stay with this Cornhusker team. Rodney Harding and Matt Monger made the tack that time on Mark Shulin, made the tackle rather on Mark Shulin. Eight o'clock continues to move with six minutes and 55 seconds to go. The gain is four. It's second and six for Nebraska. Cowboys look to stunt. Rozier gets by, and he gets to the 30-yard line across and may That's be very close to a first down. Hudson, the uh, strong safety there, was blitzing again, and we're going to see some of that today, it looks like. He just flat missed him. David Webb made the tackle for Oklahoma State. Rogier almost did not have a handle on that football. It flew up to his right side, but he managed to gather it in, get by the line of scrimmage. It's not going to be quite a first down, but it's very, very close. And they are going to bring it in a measure. From here, it does not look like they've got it, but they're going to be within a foot, even if they miss it. Rozier, you know, set a, a Nebraska record last year. He rushed for 1,689 yards. He is a tremendous back, and he is well ahead of our two Heisman Trophy candidates here in Oklahoma. And he does miss, as we said he would, by about a foot. Last year against the Cowboys, John, he had 33 rushes for 251 yards. They do not want to see that today. No, they don't. He came back and had three touchdowns in the second half of that game. And Lincoln Cowboys were trailing 21-7 at the half, but Nebraska ended up e winning easily, 48-10. Cowboys hoping that history does not repeat itself today. Gill loses the football, a scramble in the middle of the line, but Nebraska gets it back. That ball rolled out of about a crowd of 10 or 12 people down there. It's amazing where the ball will go in a, in a pile, but Mike, nobody could find it. Mike Rozier is the man who got it. You can see there that Gill loses the handle. The ball is there in the middle of that pile of players, comes out to the left side. Rozier right there, number 30, gathers it in, and Nebraska maintains control of the ball. And actually, it's a first down since yeah. he went by the line of scrimmage. So it's first and 10, Nebraska with the ball, the Corn Husker 33-yard line. That's the fullback straight up the middle, Mark Shulin, who was a walk-on, who played one year of football at the University of Nebraska at Omaha, ended up as a starter the last part of last year. He's played very well for the Corn Huskers, and that's a gain of perhaps six. It'll be second and four, maybe second and three and a half. The Corn Huskers are grinding it out right now with five minutes and 58 seconds to go in the first quarter. Shulin again, and there's a penalty in there. Could be a holding on the Nebraska offensive line. We'll have to wait and see. John, one of the things I've noticed right off, the uh, Cornhuskers came out wide open, and all of a sudden they've switched back to two tight ends. They're going to say, we're going to line up and show you who's the most physical team here. Leslie O'Neill was in on the stop that time for Oklahoma State. We will get the penalty. They're talking to James Spencer. Going to go 10 yards. Going to go 10. Washington, the nose guard there, got a double team, and I think that's who they're going to call it. Uh, they were blocking on him. Howard Rowe's going to let us know right we here. we got holding on the offense, 10 yards, second down. That's a break for the Cowboys because that makes it a second and 14. That moves the ball back inside the 30, so Nebraska has the ball second and 14 at the Cornhusker 29-yard line. Gill, the quarterback, got some wide receivers in there now. Fryer is in there. Looks to throw over the middle to Rozier. He does. He gets by Spencer. Adam Hines is the man who finally more or less roll tackled him down as Rozier got into the secondary, got by James Spencer, and Hines had to make the tackle, but Nebraska has the ball in Oklahoma State territory. I think the Cowboys are lucky there because Rozier was, all he had to do was beat the middle linebacker. He was away from him, and Hines was able to, to kick his feet out from under him. Five minutes and 21 seconds to go first quarter. It is a first and 10 for Nebraska. Huskers first time inside Oklahoma State territory at the OSU 48-yard line. Again, gambling defense. 
Great defensive play by O'Neill there. Leslie O'Neill came in. Hudson was there not too far after him as Hudson playing the strong safety position comes in. Right there, Leslie O'Neill, a great defensive player. He's played very well, a sophomore out of Little Rock. John, another thing about the two tight end offense, it gives you some more blockers to control the blitzing of the uh, defense. Second and 12, the ball now back at the Nebraska 49-yard line. Turner Gill looking to throw, faces a little bit of pressure. Pass uh -huh. was intended out there for He's Todd have Crane, who was in there as a tight end, but he overthrew him to the side, and we got another penalty flag there. We have an interference. The linebacker, Spencer, just uh, got there a little too soon. I don't think he could have caught the ball, but that's going to go against the Cowboys. Well, the kind of thing, of course, is we talk about what the Cowboys have to do to win is to stay away from that. So far, they've gotten some breaks on Nebraska penalties. Pass interference on a defense. First down. The call is against James Spencer. And so now Nebraska has a first down at the Oklahoma State 46-yard line. Four minutes, 32 seconds to go first quarter. No score. Turner Gill is the quarterback. Mark Shulin is the fullback. Mike Rogier is the tailback. Gill is changing plays at the line of scrimmage. Rogier to the left side. Roderick Fisher is the man who was in there on the tackle. Gain is four or five. Here's Rogier again to the left. He takes uh, the ball and tries to get to the outside, and Fisher, the cornerback, comes up and supports real well and really does not give him very much room. But he, did, he still picks up four yards on the play. David Webb and James Hamm also in there helping out on the tackle. Nebraska a gain of four, second and six now, the Oklahoma State 42-yard line. Gill this time on the quick snap, pitches back to Rozier on the left side, gets down to around the 36, he shoves out of bounds. I think, John, they're going to call face mask. Mike Hudson was the man who was down there. I'm not sure. I don't think it was a late hit. It was right on the sideline, but we'll see here on the replay. Yeah, Mike right Hudson there. right there, grabbed him in the face mask. The freshman out of Hominy has played very, very well. He's in there for Harry Roberts today. There you see the signal from the referee, Howard Rowe, and it's a face mask. And again, something Oklahoma State cannot afford to do because Rogier was out of bounds. The play was over. Overeager freshman has played very, very well, but it was just a freshman mistake. When, you, when you're facing an All-American. Five-yard penalty, first down. When you're facing an All-American, you want to just get a hold of anything. So Nebraska, with the help of a couple of Oklahoma State penalties, has now moved the ball down to the OSU 31-yard line. Three minutes, 56 seconds to go in the first quarter, no score. Turner Gill looks to throw quickly. He does. After Irving Fryer on the right side. Fryer tries to get by. Goes out of bounds. He is tackled out of bounds by Chris Rockins. That tackle right there is the second for Rockins in the game. So he now moves into seventh place on the all-time Oklahoma tackle list. Just ahead of Phillip Dokes. That was not a bad pass play. They tried to isolate the strong safety there with a tight end. And had Fryer been able to go one-on-one -on -one there and get away from that tackler, we might have seen six. It's interesting. We talk in basketball about isolating guys one-on-one, -on -one, and that's exactly what they tried to do there. Great individual talent. See if he could make the play happen. They run screens in, in football, too. Turner Gill is the quarterback. The ball inside the 24, straight up the middle of the ball. Ball's on the ground. The ball's on the ground, and Oklahoma State has recovered a big play for the Cowboys. I really don't... I really don't think that fullback Shellen, had, well, he did get the ball, and it was stripped there by the defensive tackle there for the Cowboys at a big play for the Cowboy defense, and they have again stopped this Cornhusker offense. Leslie O'Neill is the man who came up with the football, so he's been a major factor defensively already in this game. A big break for the Pokes. Three minutes, 45 seconds to go for his quarter, and the Cowboys have it first and 10 just outside their own 20-yard line. Rusty Hill's your quarterback. Kelly Cook is the fullback. Sean Jones is the tailback. Pretty tough going on the left side that time. Gain of, well, back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of half a yard, not much. The Nebraska defense really did not allow the offensive line to push them at all. Bring up a second and 10 or second and nine. Well, actually, it was back to the line of scrimmage, so really no gain. And the Cowboys will face a second and 10 situation at their own 21-yard line.
Hill just got John Chesley as a tight end on the right side. Jamie Harris is split to the left. Malcolm Lewis is also split to the other side. Hill just scrambling to the left. Cannot get back to the line of scrimmage. Throws the ball to Tom Osborne on the sideline. Well, we're going to have a uh, late hit there by the Nebraska Cornhuskers, but I thought maybe he's going to throw it for throwing it out of bounds, but he really got popped there by number 87 of the Cornhuskers. Kind of things we talk about, the things that will have to happen for Oklahoma State to win and have to happen against Nebraska. Those kind of things. It's a late hit. Bill Weaver, the defensive end. He's a small and he's only 210. <laughs> the Nebraska defensive line averages 228 pounds, as you see the hit there. The OSU offensive line averages 257 pounds, so it's not a big defensive line for Nebraska. Sean Jones has 11 yards and six carries. The going has been tough so far. The officials still discussing. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, going to go 15. God damn it. I got a personal foul, late hit, out of bounds, defense, first down. This is the thing that yeah. gives coaches gray hairs in any in any league. You do not want that type of penalty. We've seen two of those happen now, one against Oklahoma State, a face mask, and one a late hit against Nebraska. Big break for the Cowboys, though. First and 10, the ball on their own 36-yard line. Two minutes, 56 seconds to go for his quarter. He'll do the quarterback, Kelly Cook the fullback, and Sean Jones the pitch to Jones. On the left side, and the going is very rough. He's tackled behind the line of scrimmage by a host of Nebraska people, and the loss is a couple. Mark Don, the linebacker, was in there along with Mike McCaslin, one of the defensive backs. I think Sean Jones wanted to get outside, and there really was nothing there. He tried to cut back inside, and the, the flow of the defense caught him. It's understandable, of course, that the Cowboys run to the left side, at least here initially, because that's where their experienced offensive linemen are. John Sigelski and Kevin Igo over there on the left side, but... So far, it's been very, very tough going. Second and 12 for Oklahoma State. Cowboys with the ball at their 34-yard line. Harris goes in motion left side. They throw to Jamie to the 40, but he's tackled immediately. The gain is only three or four. Neil Harris, the cornerback out there, is the man who made the hit. Neil Harris uh, makes a good open field tackle here. Jamie is trying to get away from that guy, and they're so close to him, they're going to have to probably go to the out and up here in a minute and kind of loosen him up. Big down for the Cowboys here. Third and seven for Oklahoma State. The ball at the 39-yard line. Rusty Hildred looking at an obvious passing situation. Rolls right. Pressured. They're trying to set up the screen. The pass went to Kelly Cook, but he dropped it. The Cowboys will have to punt the football. It really was not a bad-looking play, and the screen was, all, was set up real well. They just couldn't get the ball high enough. They'll have to punt. Hilger had to throw under pressure, and the Cowboys will now have to punt it away. John Conway will do the punting, averaging just under 44 yards a kick. His longest this year has been 59. He had a super day last week, John, 46.9 average against Tulsa. Fair catch by Irving Fryer. Not a fair catch. He's going to run with the football to the 25 to about the 28-yard line. We'll be back right after this. Have some farm fresh. Now ain't that good for you? I think I'll have some farm fresh. It's good for me too. Cause that farm fresh goodness keeps you bringing out your best. You can almost taste the sunshine in the good things from farm fresh. Good bread. Turner Gildo is fullback, Mark Shulin up the middle. The gain is perhaps three after the 30-yard line, and Nebraska will face a second and seven situation. Leslie O'Neill and David Webb, and Leslie O'Neill so far has been all over the field. I tell you, the folks didn't see that back home, but the Shellen there almost fumbled that ball again. O'Neill almost stripped it again. Pitch back to Rogier, left side looking for running room, gets by the 35 after the 38. Adam Hines is the man who made the stop out of there, the junior out of St. Louis, number 14, who played quarterback for the Cowboys a year ago. There you see it again. One thing about Rozier, he follows his blockers so well, and when he finally sees an opening, he tries to get in that crack. He's got the first down. Yeah. 
Rozier came into the game averaging 151 yards a game, actually second in the country. Sean Jones of Oklahoma State averaging nearly 125 is number five in the country. First down for Nebraska. Huskers have the ball at their own 38-yard line. Cowboys showing blitz, do they? They give it to Rozier again on the left side. Gets over the 40 to the 44, fights his way to almost the 45. One thing the Cowboys need to do here, John, is they're giving that blitz away a little quick as we see Rozier coming around the left side here. And uh, in doing so, it kind of makes it easier for the offense to pick it up. James Spencer and Matt Monger, the linebackers in on the stop. Second and three for Nebraska. And that'll be the end of the first quarter, and we will not get the playoff. So at the end of the first quarter, a good, tight, close first quarter. Oklahoma State nothing, Nebraska nothing. We'll be back in just a moment. When it comes to plumbing, I don't know a fang of a jig from a whim diddly. No need. I know Sutherland. Sutherland's has all the plumbing parts and advice you need, including this complete toilet repair kit for only $4.79, this durable, easy-to-install PVC trap for $1.69, and this high-efficiency water-saving shower head for just $3.95, now at Sutherland's. Whatever you call it for plumbing, go to Sutherland's. Tell them, what's his name since you? Our land is your land at Sutherland's. If you weren't watching Newsline 9, you missed the first report and exclusive live Ranger 9 video of Wednesday's manhunt. We've got Captain Daryl Newman of the Creek County Sheriff's Department with us right now. He's in the helicopter. We've been coordinating our aerial search with the ground search of the Oklahoma Highway Patrol, Creek County Sheriff's Department. You also missed the capture and exclusive aerial video of the 17th floor fire in the Kerr-McGee building. News live as it happens. Newsline 9, we give you more. I'm so used to seeing it. I... Back at Lewis Field in Stillwater, John Snyder along with Terry Brown. Ed Murray is down on the field. We've had a great first quarter. The Cowboys have played very well defensively. Right now we're 0-0. Nebraska has the football as we're set to start the second quarter. Switching ends of the field, Nebraska has the ball. Second and three at the Nebraska 44-yard line. There's been some breaks in the game on both sides. A couple of fumbles, uh, some costly penalties against both sides. The Cowboys have played very well defensively, and right now they're very much in the ball game against the Husker. Score right there, North Carolina and Wake Forest, 10-10 at the half. That would be an upset if Wake Forest could beat North Carolina. That's right. North Carolina, of course, is number four in the country and an outstanding football team. Michigan over Michigan State. They're having an easy afternoon, 25 to nothing. Traditional rival up there, Michigan to Michigan State. Ohio State over Purdue, 12-7 at the half. Purdue's not very good, so the Buckeyes are struggling. Right here, we've got a football game at 0-0 as we start the second quarter. Turner Gill in there at quarterback. Shulin is the fullback. The pitch comes to Mike Rogier looking for running room out across the 50-yard line to the Oklahoma State 48. David Webb is the man who finally made the tackle, but that'll be a gain of about eight yards, eight yards. John Rozier gets the ball here on the OI slot formation. And you, we was talking prior to the game about we have an injury on the field. That, and it's Mike Rozier, I believe. I believe it is, too. Rozier is down, being attended to by the Nebraska trainer out there. Taking off his helmet. Perhaps he got hit in the face, or perhaps it's a neck injury. We'll wait. The thing we'll be back in just a moment. You're going to love the great cola taste of regular Pepsi Free. And wait till you try delicious diet Pepsi Free. There's no diet cola like we it. We are Pepsi Free. Caffeine free. Tastes how good a cola can be. We are Pepsi Free. Mike Rozier is out of the game. Jeff Smith is in there to replace him. Smith has got the football straight ahead. Inside the 45 to about the 44. Rozier is okay. He left the field under his own power. Leslie O'Neill again in on the tackle for Oklahoma State. So far, he's been the defensive player of the game. Smith is in there to back up Mike Rogier, who left the game and still out of the game, but he appeared to be okay. He left under his own power. One of the things the Cowboys defense did there, John, was fake the blitz. That, that might confuse Nebraska a little bit. Smith is in there at tailback. Shulin is the fullback. Cowboys again fake the blitz, and Chris Rockins came in to get it. That was no fake. Chris Rockins came in from his cornerback position, 
and really powdered the tailback here. There was nobody blocking on him. He makes an excellent tackle there. Chris Rockins is a busy young man, as is Leslie O'Neill. Chris Rockins is starting in his 39th consecutive game at Oklahoma State. He's a senior, he's been a starter ever since the very first game of his freshman year. He's had a great career here, and he had a great play there. It is third and six. Nebraska with the ball at the Oklahoma State 45. Gill looks to throw. Ricky Simmons has got it out of bounds, but it won't count because he was out of bounds when he came down. In college football, you only have to have one leg in. And as you see here, as we watch this, Gill throws the ball. Good pass, strong arm there by Gill. And as he, Simmons catches the ball, he comes down with his feet out of bounds. Roderick Fisher was the man out there defending on the play. I'll tell you, that's the second standing ovation I've seen. The end of the first <laughs> quarter when there was no score and then the defense. Scott Livingston is in there to do the punting. Bobby Riley is back on his own 10-yard line for Oklahoma State. Then he kind of kick it all. This will go into the end zone. Sets it up there at the 10. Riley calls for the fair catch. Hope, oh, Nebraska may down it right here. Oh, what a break against the Cowboys. He Nebraska stops it on the two-yard line. We'll be back with more in just a moment. I can see you have some farm fresh. Now ain't that good for you? I think I'll have some farm fresh. It's good for me too. Cause that farm fresh goodness keeps you bringing out your best. You can almost taste the sunshine in the good things from farm fresh. Good bread. Cowboys have the ball, first and 10 at their own eight yard line. It hit a Nebraska player upfield, so instead of downing it on the two, it's down on the eight. Not much better, but a little better. Kelly Cook tries for some running room, perhaps lost a yard, certainly got no more than back to the line of scrimmage, and it's very tough going against that Nebraska defensive line. It sure is. Kelly just actually ran into his own blocker. Somebody had stood up the man in front of him, and he, there's no place to go. You see Tom Osborne, the Nebraska head coach in his 11th year. Florida leading Vanderbilt in the second quarter, 13-0. As Terry mentioned, Tom Osborne in 10 years as coach has been to 10 bowl games. Iowa leads Northwestern 7-0 in the first period. Rusty Hilger brings his team out. It is second and 10. Cowboys with the ball at their own 8-yard line. Would love to get a couple of first downs, even if they couldn't go the length of the field, to put Nebraska in poor field position. He throws it out of bounds. Intended out there for Jamie Harris, but uh, Harris really was covered, and Rusty threw it away. The thing that broke that play up, John, was number 11, Harris, bumped. Jamie Harris and had he not bumped him it would it would have been a good play Cowboys facing a crucial play here now because it will be third and ten at their own eight yard line and obviously if they don't make the ten yards they'll have to punt the ball away Conway will have to kick it away from his end zone and Nebraska could end up with the ball in good field position Cowboys would love the big play right here Hilger has Cook and Sean Jones behind him Good play to Jones. Jones may get a first down. Jones may go further than that. Jones may score. He's tackled on the 27-yard line, but what a play by Sean Jones. The Nebraska Cornhuskers was running a blitz, and they got caught in it. And, they, and Sean Jones breaks up the middle, could not outrun the guys. He was finally brought down there by Dave Burke, the 5'10", 195-pound junior from Utah. What a big play, and we talked about those big plays. This is the key to this game, John, is running that ball against this Nebraska defense and keeping it away from that offense. 64-yard run on this play by Sean Jones, and that was a brilliant call. It sure was. It was a brilliant call right up the middle, kind of a delay. Just That's give it to Jones right up the middle, and uh, the Cowboys now not necessarily knocking at the door, but feeling a lot better than they were a moment ago. Jones again up the left side, across the line of scrimmage inside the 25 to about the 22. If the Cowboys can take this ball, go in and score, you talk about a confidence factor rising, that's gonna help them. Mike Knox was the man in on the tackle for the University of Nebraska, and obviously, the Huskers being tested today like they haven't been in the first five games of the season as they've averaged 57 points a game and they've run up and down the field against teams. They've not been able to do it today against Oklahoma State. Game was four by Sean Jones, so it's a second and six. Malcolm Lewis, the freshman out of Houston, split out to the left side. Jamie Harris in the slot to the left. Hilger calls the signals. Again, this is Kenny Zachary in the game now, the sophomore out of Sepulpa. He carries it over the 20-yard line. Should have a first down or very close to a first down. And Brett Clark makes the tackle. 
If, if you look to your left of your screen, Kelly Cook, you can't sit right there at the end of it. Kelly Cook really watched the defensive tackle out, allows Sean Jones to go in for the first down. First down, Oklahoma State with the football at the Nebraska 18-yard line. 11 minutes and 24 seconds to go in the first half. Oklahoma State has not beaten Nebraska since 1961. The two teams struggled to a 17-17 tie here 10 years ago in 1973. Malcolm Lewis is split to the left side. Jamie Harris is to the right. Fakes to Zachary. Rusty Hilger wants to throw, has to scramble to the right, still looking for someone. Hits Zachary across the line of scrimmage to about the 14, so the game will be about four. Mike McCashlin, the monster back, was in there for Nebraska to make the stop. This was a play pass, and the Zachary just kind of snuck through the line there. You could just see him at the top, bottom of the screen. Hilger had to roll to his right, and he finally spots Zachary out in the flat all by himself. Picks up a couple yards on the play. A couple yards, they will give him two. Second and eight, second and seven, now they give him three. The ball is right at the 15-yard line on the right-hand hash mark. Rusty Hilcher may want a timeout to talk things over. The Cowboys take a timeout. Timeout on the field, no score in the second quarter. We're back in a moment. Take the most intriguing look at life in the entire USA. Every day in USA Today's Life section. Fast-paced, colorful, and lively. It looks at the talk, the trends, what's hot and what's not. USA Today, the nation's newspaper. Exciting, rewarding, fascinating, and vital. USA Even with all the new communications technology on the horizon, people on the move will still need the benefit of immediate message information. So Oklahoma Paging brings you Display Paging, the latest innovation that allows you to be reached anywhere in Greater Tulsa and Oklahoma City, all the way to Lawton. Messages are visually received on your beeper's display screen, telling you who needs you and where they are. Take it from George Kennedy. Ask about the digital display beeper, the confidential discreet communicator from Oklahoma Paging. 10 minutes and 56 seconds to go in the second quarter. We are scoreless at Lewis Field in Stillwater. Oklahoma State trying to knock off the unanimous number one team in the country, the University of Nebraska. Cowboys with the ball second and seven at the Nebraska 15-yard line. Rusty Hill to the quarterback. Ken Zachary is the tailback. Kelly Cook is the fullback. Give us to Zachary who squirts his way to the 10. The gain is uh, five yards to bring up a third and two. Kenny Zachary just went over the left side with fine blocking on that left side of the line. Kind of squirmed his way through that little hole and picks up excellent yardage. We are told that Mike Rogier is healthy for Nebraska. Remember, he left the field a few moments ago. He will be back the next time Nebraska gets the ball. The Cowboys would like that to be a kickoff after a score. Big play right here, third and two for Oklahoma State. The ball is right at the 10, so they have to get to the eight to get the first down. If they can't do it, we likely will see Larry Roach to try to put three on the board. Harrison motion to the left side. Zachary again, he's not going to get it. He's going to be at least a yard short. He got a little bit over the line of scrimmage, but not much. They tried to use the motion man to get people shifting around, and the Nebraska defense was not fooled, and uh, they're going to attempt the field goal. Mike McCashlin and Mark Dom in on the tackle. So Larry Roach, who already holds almost all of the kicking records here at Oklahoma State, will try a 26-yard field goal. They will spot the ball at the 16-yard line. Adam Hines is the holder. Roach's longest field goal this year is 49 yards. That was against Texas A&M a couple of weeks ago. John, you know that Nebraska defense has probably played five minutes more than they have all year <laughs> his first <laughs> half. Cowboys with a chance to take the lead here. Larry Roach, the junior out of Dallas, who has been so exceptional as a kicker the last couple of years, all big eight the last two years. 26-yard attempt. Up and good. Cowboys take the lead. 3-0. We'll be back in just a moment. 
Right. Oklahoma didn't sprout up overnight. It took long, hard years of diligent work, unbridled imagination, time, and vision. It also required capital. You know it took capital. Today, as Oklahoma continues to grow and prosper, the First National Bank and Trust Company of Oklahoma City will continue to be Oklahoma's financial source, turning ideas into reality. Go to the source, the source, go to the first. Member FDIC. The buying urge gets everyone for every reason. What this business needs is a computer. Where are we going to take your mother-in-law on her birthday? If those tires get any balder... And when the buying urge gets them, smart shoppers take it to the Southwestern Bell Yellow Pages. She loves Italian food. Wow, this place has it all. So make sure your Yellow Pages ad is ready to sell them when the buying urge gets them. Should we send her flowers, too? People take their urges to the Yellow Pages. Kevin Godfrey out of Ponca City will do the kicking off for Oklahoma State from the 40-yard line. Mike Rogier, healthy, is back in the game. He and Jeff Smith are on the goal line at the other end of the field. This is not the first time this year the Huskers have trailed because UCLA led Nebraska 10-0 after an awful lot of Nebraska penalties and mistakes early in that game a couple of weeks ago up in Nebraska. And, of course, Nebraska went on to win that game 42-10. Godfrey will kick off for Oklahoma State. Cowboys lead at 10-0. Nine minutes, or rather 10-0, I wish. It's 3-0 in the second quarter with 10 minutes and 32 seconds to go in the first half. Godfrey's kick sails high and into the end zone and Rozier and Smith will watch it and Nebraska will start out first and 10 at their own 20. That's another good weapon is not let him touch the ball just kick it out of the end it's zone. The best way. And Roach does an excellent job of doing that. Maryland and Syracuse. Maryland rated in the nation's top 20. Leads Syracuse in the second quarter, 10 to 3. Syracuse will have an easier time than it did last week against Nebraska. Florida and Vanderbilt, 13 to 3. Florida, that game is at the half. Turner Gill is the quarterback. The fullback is Mark Shulin. And the tailback is Mike Rogier. Nebraska first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Gill rolling right, looking to throw. Hits Irving Fryer on the right flat. He is bounced out of bounds at the 32-yard line. And that will be a first down for Nebraska. Chris Rockins was in there on the tackle for Oklahoma State. And uh, John, there's a flag as we watch Gill roll out here. I don't understand the secondary right here. Uh, I really don't know what the thinking is, but there was really nobody within five yards of him. They made the linebacker come out. And that's kind of tough to cover for a linebacker. This is going to be a penalty, I would think, against Nebraska, though probably offensive holding. We'll have to wait and see. I believe they're going to call rough in the passer, John. Rough in the passer. He hit him right at the end of the play. Wishful thinking, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> The ball's going to go out to the 35-yard line, so that helps Personal the Huskers foul. out. They've got first Ruffing and 10. The passer here. First down. Personal foul against the Cowboys. Nebraska first and 10 at the 35. Nine minutes and 26 seconds to go now in the first half. Nebraska trailing 3-0. Gill perhaps changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Takes a while to call. The fullback straight up the middle. Shaleen. There seemed to be some confusion there, John. I watched the linemen, and they were looking around, trying to figure out what to do. As we watch the play here, Shellen goes right up the middle and really has no place to go. Matt Monger was in on the stop for Oklahoma State. Leslie O'Neill again in on the stop for Oklahoma State. Leslie O'Neill's played a great game so far defensively for the Cowboys. Clock continuing to move now. Slightly less than nine minutes to go at the half. Nebraska has it second and eight at the Nebraska 38-yard line. Gill to Fryer, and this one's going to be a touchdown, folks. They will never catch him right here. Never catch him. Just that quickly, and that's how quickly they can score. Irving Fryer. This is a very explosive offense, and they, the Cowboys gamble there for the interception as he throws the just simple post pattern, and he was beaten there, and it's uh, nothing but a foot race. That's a 62-yard pass play, and it was a, a well-conceived play because Gill stood up at the line of scrimmage, hesitated only a moment, Fryer, the crossing route, got the ball right here. Great pass. Fryer was gone. Was that quick? Well, Fisher had a shot at him, but he just couldn't grab. That's a fine receiver, Fryer. Three plays, 80 yards for Nebraska, and that's how quickly the Cornhuskers can score. And there's going to be a penalty right there as the man who kicks for Nebraska is knocked down by Oklahoma State. And we'll have a, the kick count, so they will simply kick the ball off. Nebraska leading it right now. They may, go, they may go for two. They may go for two. We'll see what happens. They act like they're going to go to the other end of the field and kick it off. It would be a penalty against Oklahoma State. They may assess it on the kickoff, roughing the kicker. 
is Schneider was the man who kicked the ball through. The penalty is against the Cowboys. The kick counts. It is 7-3. Oklahoma State trails by four. We'll be back in a moment. It's 3.30. Wake up, Harry. You wanted to go to the bank today. You know how far away it At is. At Local you Federal, have we have all the financial services your bank offers, plus 21 convenient locations. Morning. Up early again, huh? Going to the bank? At Local Federal, we're more than a savings and loan. I'm Tuck Lane. There's a Local Federal branch nearby. Come in and let us help you. Local Federal. In a word. Dependable. 7-3, Nebraska scoring on a 62-yard pass from Turner Gill to Irvin Cryer, and just that quickly, the Huskers are on the board. Nebraska leads at 7-3 with 8 minutes and 45 seconds to go in the first half. The Cowboys have driven 93 yards and settled for a 26-yard field goal from the toe of Larry Roach. Now, the roughing the kicker penalty as Schneider kicked it through the point after for Nebraska will be assessed here on the kickoff, a 15-yard penalty, and so Nebraska actually will kick off from the Oklahoma State 45-yard line. You know, one thing, John, this is not a place to panic for the OSU uh, offense and defense. They need to stick to what they're doing because it's working. They just gambled there and, and it didn't work. This is also a place on the field you might look for an onside kick. Quite possibly with only 45 yards to go to the end zone. Livingston is the man who will kick off for Nebraska. Will he kick it into the end zone or will he try the onside kick? The Cowboys are expecting the onside. Adam Hines is the man who comes up with it at about the 28-yard line. Well, that's what they tried, the onside kick, but the Cowboys had everybody but two people right there within two yards. I'm not certain, it. Terry, but I suspect that the Cowboys were expecting that and had out there their good hands people on the front line of that kickoff return unit. There is a flag on the play over in front of the Nebraska bench, and we'll see what it's about. Probably offsides. They get a little anxious on those uh, onside kicks, and they want to be first down. Offsides, kicking team, decline, first down. Cowboys have the ball first and 10 at their own 29-yard line. To, to make that point again, the people the Cowboys had in there for the kickoff team were the people with the good hands up there in the front. Usually they've got the big linemen up there. There's the score, North Carolina and Wake Forest. Georgia leading Mississippi in the first quarter, 9-0. Ike Jackson has replaced Rusty Hildred, quarterback. The junior out of Fort Smith is in there now, replacing Hildred, quarterback for Oklahoma State. Ike gives to Sean Jones, who's across the 30, gain of perhaps two, and we'll have to get word if the Cowboys have simply made the change, trying to go to Jackson for some reason, or perhaps Rusty's hurt. We'll have to wait and see. Jackson has not played that much this year. Played a great deal last year, as you might remember, when uh, Hildred was not able to play because of a shoulder injury, and Adam Hines had some problems, and Jackson played the last several games of the season. And has a rifle for an arm. He sure does. He's got a great arm. He does not have the experience of a Rusty Hilger. Probably doesn't scramble and run as well, but uh, he's in there right now. I played well last year, the second part of the year. Completed 100 passes out of 199. Cowboys now facing a second and eight at their own 31-yard line. Jackson completes to Malcolm Lewis. The freshman out of Houston, he's knocked out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Number 11, Neil Harris, the cornerback, got him out of bounds. This was exactly the same play we saw earlier, except the difference is Malcolm Lewis was not bumped by the corner. He had plenty of room to catch the ball. Lewis was one of the blue chip players last year out of the state of Texas, highly recruited by a number of well-known football schools, Stanford, Notre Dame, Southern Cal, to name a few, decided to come to Oklahoma State. He's majoring in aerospace engineering, a very bright young man, and he started the last couple of weeks at the receiver spot for the Cowboys. Cowboys now first and 10. Ball on their own 49-yard line. Jackson gives straight ahead to Jones, who's back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. I tell you, football games are won and lost in the trenches, and that time the Nebraska defense was able to penetrate the offensive line and get into the backfield and really just stacked it up for no gain. Clock is continuing to move. Seven minutes and 40 seconds to go in the first half. Cowboys trail it 7-3. to three. They played very well against the number one-ranked team in the country. Second and 10, there was no gain on that first play. Cowboys just inside their own territory as Harris goes in motion to the right side and Lewis is split to the right side. Jackson gives to Jones. Jones is across the line of scrimmage down to around the Nebraska 45. The gain will be almost six. It'll bring up a third and four, perhaps third and four and a half. Scott Strasburger was in on the tackle. Jones takes this on from the eye and just goes right up the right side. Pretty good hole there and was able to pick up about five yards on the play going to give him five and it's going to be a third and five situation for Oklahoma State. Yeah, 
Ike Jackson, the junior out of Fort Smith, is now the quarterback for the Cowboys. Kelly Cook has gone all the way at fullback. Jones has played most of the way at tailback. Jackson's pass to Harris will not count because it slid into his arms and he trapped the football. I'm anxious for a replay here. <laughs> Jamie Harris, what the Nebraska Cornhuskers are doing are running a double zone. And what that means for you folks at home, they, the corners are playing the short zone and the, the safeties have the deep zone. The ball goes here, and as we see, uh, I believe it did hit the ground there at the last second, John. I was hoping it wouldn't, but it wouldn't make any difference. Well, John Conway will come on to do the punting for Oklahoma State. Ball's at the Nebraska 46. They're lined up in the... Yeah, Rusty Hilger will come on to do the punting or perhaps run the shotgun. We'll see what happens. Rusty can kick, but he can also throw. He scrambles to the right side, gets the pass away, and it's incomplete. So Nebraska has the football. Is there a flag down? No. And Nebraska... Will, wait a minute. There's a penalty flag in front of the Nebraska bench on the other side of the field. John, what happened? Nobody saw it. I saw it. Uh, well, somebody saw it because the official saw it. <laughs> The wing back on the right side moved just a hair at the last second. And they're going to call procedure. They're going to decline the penalty. So Nebraska will have the ball. The procedure penalty will go against Oklahoma State. Cowboys perhaps faking the punt. Uh, Hilger can punt. He's done some punting in the past. But uh, that time Rusty was looking to throw. They couldn't complete it. But the procedure penalty goes against the Cowboys. Six minutes, 37 seconds to go. Nebraska with the football in great field position on their own 46-yard line. Turner Gill, Mike Shulin, Mike Rozier is a tailback. Gill looks to throw. He's hammered right at the line of scrimmage. Leslie O'Neill again was in there on the stop for Oklahoma State along with Matt Mondo, the linebacker. I don't know what they fed Leslie O'Neill, but I wish they'd have fed it to everybody. He's just having an outstanding game. Matt Monger was the first one to hit him there. Coach uh, Johnson was really living on that last play. He thought they interfered also down there. And maybe, they, you know, it's a judgment call too. Second and 10. Cornhusker ball on the Nebraska 46-yard line. Cowboys have played very well defensively. Turner Gill looking for the option, gives to Rozier, puts a move on a man, gets across the 50, and the gain will be six, perhaps seven. It'll bring up a third and four, perhaps third and three. This is a very good play off of this I formation with a wing back. They, they uh, fake the reverse and run the option. Injured player. There's an injured player down on the field. Third down, Oklahoma State player will try to see who it is. Mike Hudson, the freshman out of Hominy, who's played very well today, That's shaking sort of, up on the play. That will shake the secondary up a little bit, John. They'll, if he can't play, Moore will come in. Mike Hudson, the freshman out of Hominy, who's played very well. His uncle, Jesse Hudson, was a linebacker here, I believe, about 10 years ago for Oklahoma State. And a very good one. That is Mike Hudson. Hudson being attended to, perhaps a knee injury or an ankle injury. We'll I have think to wait and see. I think Coach Johnson's still facing that sideline on that fourth down play. Call. <laughs> we may not see Mike Hudson anymore today as he leaves. Obviously with a knee or an ankle injury, perhaps his left leg. And that means that Mark Moore, the freshman from Nacogdoches, Texas, will be in there in the defensive backfield for Oklahoma State. It's a third and four situation for Nebraska. Rozier is hit behind the line of scrimmage. Gets perhaps one. Keith Brown, the nose guard, was in there to make the stop, and Nebraska will face a fourth and two. I'll tell you, the nose guard played an excellent play here. He played off the block of the center and just ran right through him. And I believe Nebraska's going to call timeout. Nebraska. Turner Gill is going to come over now to talk with Tom Osborne. As you see, Osborne waiting his quarterback there. Jimmy Johnson will talk with some of his defensive people on the other side. It's a big play right here because there's five minutes and 24 seconds to go in the first half, and the Cowboys have played so very well. Nebraska leads 7-3 on a 62-yard pass from Gil to Fryer. The Cowboys have a 26-yard field goal off the toe of Larry Roach, but Nebraska's debating whether or not to go for this right here. They are inside Oklahoma State territory at about the 46-yard line, have to get to the 44 for first down. Actually, it's a little bit less than two yards, I think, about a yard and a half. The official, it is about a yard and a half. I don't think Tom Osborne would gamble here. I think that he will punt the ball. If he was at home, he might, but this is kind of a bad place. 
We've got a great game going for you today. We're going to have another great one next week. Join us for the Cowboys against the Oklahoma Sooners right here at Lewis Field. Our pregame show is at 1 o'clock, and the kickoff is at 1.30. Myself, Terry Brown, Ed Murray, and our broadcast crew will be here next week to bring you that game. It should be a good one. We've got a great one today, too. The only thing that worries me about that game is getting everybody excited. <laughs> In the state of Oklahoma, no problem. <laughs> Livingston on to do the punting for Nebraska. As Osborne, as Terry Brown pointed out, is not really willing to take the chance. You just give the other team too much momentum if you do that. Livingston to punt the full football. Cowboys have no one back. It's a short kick as he kicked it straight up in the air, and Nebraska will down it inside the 20. At the 21-yard line, Paul Miles is the man who downed it for Nebraska, so the Cow, not the 21, the 18. Cowboys will have it at the 18-yard line. With a chance to do something here with five minutes and 16 seconds to go. You know, as a coach, you want, on that type of punch, you want them to let the ball bounce and hope that it bounces toward the goal line. We'll bring you a wrap-up of college gridiron actions around the country tonight at 10.15 on our college football scoreboard show. Highlights and locker room interviews of this game and also that Sooner game against the University of Texas from Dallas. A complete report tonight at 10.15 following Newsline 9. Ike Jackson is the quarterback still in there for Oklahoma State. Kelly Cook and Sean Jones behind him. Give us to Jones across the 20, down to about the 24. The gain is about five and a half. Cowboys will look at a second and 10. Clock continuing to move. Sean Jones takes this ball, goes over the left side, and the Cowboys are doing just exactly what they need to be doing. Stay with their game plan, run that the play that's got them here, and not panic, and they are doing that right now. Second and five, with the clock moving at four minutes and 49 seconds to go first half. It's been a great first half. Oklahoma State has played very well. Ike Jackson, a quarterback. He's got Harris on the left side split out, Lewis on the right side, and he gives again to Jones, who looks for some running room on the right side. The gain is uh, about three. He's going to be within about a yard and a half of the first down, depending on where they spot it. Okay, Jones takes the, uh, the handoff deep in there, and he gets a good seal-off block there by the right guard, and he's able to get through that seam, and that's what a good eye back needs to do. Just this pick him a hole and go. Very close to the first down. Less than a yard, about two feet, maybe less than that. Big play for the Cowboys to keep it going. Third and one at the Oklahoma State 28-yard line. Jones, with that big 64-yard run that led to the field goal, has 13 carries, 90 yards. He may not have gotten the first down, depending on where they spot it. I think they're going to give it to him, John. He got right up over the line, right on the 30, and that's enough. They got it. First and down for Oklahoma State right at the 30-yard line. Cowboys keep the ball with just under four minutes to go in the first half. I said on that last play that was the guard, but actually that was the center, Tucker, who sealed off that block, and again, they went right over him. He's done an outstanding job at center for the Cowboys this year. Ike Jackson sends Lewis to the left side, Jamie Harris to the right. Harris has caught two today. Lewis has caught one. Jackson showing pass all the way. Now has to scramble a little bit. Looking to run. He's going to be knocked out of bounds right at the line of scrimmage. I tell you, Jackson really wanted Jamie Harris down that sideline, but the defensive back wouldn't allow him to get down it. He did he, a good job. He didn't job. look at anybody else but Harris either, did no. he? <laughs> there he is. As you look here on the screen, he wants him all the way, and he can't get him, so he has to decide to run. Weber's a man who chased him out of bounds. The gain might have been half a yard, but they'll call it second and ten. Clock is stopped with three minutes and 35 seconds to go. At halftime, we will talk with the president of Oklahoma State University, Dr. Lawrence Bogle. Jackson again showing pass all the way, looking for Harris. Across the middle, he finds Lewis. First down, Oklahoma State at their own 48-yard line. Cowboys move it down to the 48. Dave Burke is the man who made the tackle, and Malcolm Lewis, the freshman, shook himself loose. John, the thing that makes this thing work is this Jackson has all day. Look at the protection he has. He finally steps up in the pocket. Lewis comes across the middle wide open. Uh, when you give them that much time, they ought to get open, and they do. Down to the field quickly for Ed Murray. Mike Hudson, uh, the injury to Mike Hudson, he has his knee wrapped in ice. He's down for return. Also, Kenny Zachary has ice on his thigh. He may return. John? Thank you, Ed. Zachary was in there earlier. Sean Jones is in there tailback right now. Kelly Cook is the fullback. Ike Jackson is in at quarterback. Jackson having to scramble, tries to throw, and the pass is incomplete, intended for Lewis or intended for Harris. Harris out there on the right side. 
John, they only had three people out that time. If they could have sent a back out that time, I think we they might have. There's Ken, Kenny Zachary on the bench right there. Excuse me, Terry, with the, some ice on the thigh. He may be back. I would think that Hudson probably is doubtful to return today. Mark Moore is in there at the defensive backfield. So at that one position defensively for Oklahoma State, the Cowboys have lost Harry Roberts to a shoulder injury. He did not even start the game, won't play at all. Mike Hudson to an knee injury. Mark Moore, a freshman, is in there. That's defensively. Cowboys have it offensively now with three minutes and five seconds to go, second and ten. Jackson looks to throw again over the middle. Harris cannot hang on to the football and will not count. The sad thing about this play, John, is Harris had, a touch, uh, had the first down. Ike Jackson dropped straight back, a true drop back quarterback. He throws the curl. Harris is wide open and hits him in a bad spot. And that's why they moved me to defense. <laughs> You caught 54 in 1968, not bad. Still a school record up here, as a matter of fact. Third and 10, Cowboys have passed in the first two downs of this series. And they're gonna show pass this time. Obvious passing situation, Nebraska sent the linebackers over the middle to John Chesley, the tight end. He's at the 40, the 30, the 25, knocked out of bounds inside the 25 yard line. That's the first time we've seen the pass to Chesley today, but we were talking earlier this week about how we thought the Cowboys would do exactly that. Yeah, uh, Jimmy Johnson said that he would like to go to the tight end more. Chesley is so important to this team on blocking, but boy, he did all right then. He got the ball and, and got down the sideline where he needs to be. And Ike Jackson did a good job of getting it away under pressure because Nebraska was sending the linebackers on the blitz, and Ike stayed right in the pocket to find Chesley over the middle, and John, with his great athletic ability, ran it down to the 23-yard line. Two minutes, 42 seconds to go, first half. Cowboys with the football, and the officials now stopping play for a moment. I tell they you, want a timeout. John, it's nice to have a target that's 6'6". <laughs> John Chesley's brother, Al, of course, is a tight end of the National Football League, plays now with the Chicago Bears, played several years with the Philadelphia Eagles, and John, undoubtedly, will be a high draft choice of the pros next spring. So, it is first and 10 at the Nebraska 23-yard line. Cowboys have played very excellently so far. They've done a great job against the number one team in the country. Nebraska leads at 7-3. Cowboys perhaps knocking at the door. Jackson looks to throw again. A little flare pass out to the right side to Jones. Looking for some running room inside to about the 15-yard line. This is a good-looking play. They set up the screen to the right side. He's got two lead blockers. There's an excellent block there by Partita, the guard. And then another one, and he cuts up there and gets about seven, eight, nine yards on the play. Just an excellent play by the Cowboys. Brett Clark and Dave Burke made the stop for Nebraska. It'll be second and one as the game was uh, nine, about eight and a half or nine, and the Cowboys now with the ball just inside the 15-yard line. Clock continuing to move. A minute and 45 seconds to go. Jackson rolling left, looking to throw again. Throws into the end zone. Jamie Harris, touchdown, Oklahoma State. I tell you, they, these fans are excited. <laughs> if you watch here, you can't see it on the corner, but the corner tries to bump the receiver, and he can't get away with it. Neil, Neil Harris, Harris tried to bump him. He bumped him, but he bumped him right into the end zone, and a touchdown from Ike Harris, uh, from Ike Jackson to Jamie Harris. Jamie Harris is the man who made the catch down there for Oklahoma State. Touchdown, Cowboys, for Harris. His third catch of the day, his 19th catch of the season, his fifth touchdown pass of the season. Larry Roach hopes to add the extra point. He does. A little bit of a line drive kick, but it is good. I so the Cowboys have taken the lead 10 to 7. A minute 39 to go. First half, Oklahoma State leads by three. We're back in a moment. Well, oh, I bet it's... I bet it's... Well, there you see the score, and that is definitely the story of the day in college football right now. The Cowboys leading with a minute 39 to go in the first half here at Lewis Field. A 15-yard touchdown pass from Mike Jackson to Jamie Harris. Kevin Godfrey will do the kicking. The young man out of Ponca City will kick it into the end zone. Jeff Smith will down it there. And Nebraska will start first and 10 at their own 20 with a minute 39 to go. You know, John, one play has been the difference because the Cowboys have come out and done some excellent things on offense and defense with the one play. That 62-yard touchdown pass from Turner Gill to Irving Fryer, which put Nebraska on the board and gave them their seven. The Cowboys have a 26-yard field goal from the toe of Larry Roach and a 15-yard pass from Jamie Harris. Jamie Harris caught it from Mike Jackson to Jamie Harris, and the Cowboys now will play good defense, which they've done so far here in the first half. 
A minute 39 to go. Turner Hill looks to throw on the right side. Throws out to Ricky Simmons, who fell down, got up, and then couldn't make the catch. I said earlier that they were not covering the man in the flat. That time, Mark Moore had the man in the flat prior. He goes to Simmons, the wide receiver, and this would have been a tremendous catch if he'd have caught it. He was turned inside and couldn't get back to the outside, as you see there on your screen. Tom Osborne, the Nebraska coach, in his 11th year, and he's facing something now he hasn't faced this year. His team is trailing right near the end of the first half, a minute 34 to go, second and 10 for Nebraska. Turner Gill again looks to throw. Turner Les Gill is sacked by Leslie O'Neill. You'd know it for sure. Leslie O'Neill came from the right side here. It looked like he came out of a chute. Nobody blocked him. And here you can see him really past, uh, plastering Turner Gill. And he's not used to that either, John. I'll tell you what, we don't give a defensive player the game like they do on the <laughs> network telecast, but so far, Leslie O'Neill's won the award, whatever you want to give. Look Oklahoma, the Sooners have taken a 7-0 lead over Texas in the first quarter, so right now it's shaping up as a great afternoon for Oklahoma and Oklahoma State football. Third and 20 for Nebraska. They give to Rogier, who can't find any running room, and the Huskers will have to punt it away. Leslie O'Neill and John Washington in there to make the stop. John, here's the situation as you watch Turner Gill hand off to Rozier. You've got third and 20, and you're not going to gamble when the fans are fired up like this. It's a smart play by Osborne. Just get the ball out of there. Livingston will come on to do the punting for Nebraska. Clock is moving with 31 seconds to go. Bobby Riley, the freshman from Stroud, is back at his own 45-yard line. Livingston will punt from about three yards deep in his own end zone. Riley will just let Nebraska down at it right about the 41-yard line. No sense taking any chances with 10 seconds to go in the half. And that, that's right. And, uh, you know, I don't know why Nebraska keeps touching that ball. They could have let the clock run out by just letting it roll. Here's what we have tonight for you on Channel 9 at 6 o'clock, of course. News Line 9, the People's Court with Judge Wapner, Cutter to Houston, the CBS movie, September Gun, the news, and, of course, our scoreboard show at 10.15, this week in country music at 10.30, and Star Search with Ed McMahon at 11 o'clock. Ike Jackson is still in there at quarterback. You would expect the Cowboys here to probably just fall in the football and go into the locker room and feel great about it, come out and play great in the second half. Jackson looking to throw with 10 seconds to go. The pass is out here in the flat to Harris, who could not hang on. That's one Jamie will know that he should have had, but he caught the important one, the touchdown pass a few moments ago. Five seconds to go. We'll have one more play here in the first half of this game. I think Jamie was looking to get hit there. Nobody was there to hit him. He's just that's just lack of concentration, and he'll he'll correct that in, in the second half. Harris has caught three passes so far today. He's got 19 receptions on the year, five of them for touchdowns, one of them in this game. Cowboys second and ten at their own 44-yard line. Jackson has come on here and played most of the second quarter for Oklahoma State and done very well. The junior out of Fort Smith looking to throw. Now he's going to run up the middle. Clock is out, and Jackson is just going to fall down. And that is the end of the first half. Our score, Oklahoma State 10, Nebraska 7. And listen to the OSU fans. Oklahoma State over Nebraska. The Cowboys leading at 10 to 7. With me now, another halftime guest, Harper Davidson, who is a member of the Orange Bowl Committee from Miami, Florida. And welcome to Oklahoma, sir. I'll bet you have to be surprised, though, by this first half score. Well, it's a little surprising, but boy, it's a great game, and Oklahoma State has a tremendous football team, and they're showing it out there the first half. As everybody knows, the winner of the Big 8 Conference goes to the Orange Bowl, and what is the selection process if there is a tie in the Big 8 Conference? Well, the selection process would be that um, we would have the opportunity, along with the uh, Big 8, to determine who would be the representative to come out there. Uh, I would say that if there was a tie and we had a Nebraska and an Oklahoma State, that uh, there's a good chance that uh, we would pick Oklahoma State because uh, we've had Nebraska and we've had Oklahoma. So uh, I think we would uh, probably, I can't say for sure, but probably pick Oklahoma State. Has the Big 8 tie-up with the Orange Bowl been good for both parties? Are both, both parties happy with well, it? Well, as far as the Orange Bowl committee in Miami, it certainly has been great. And matter of fact, we've extended it another couple of years just recently. So we're really pleased with the Big 8 tie-up. The Orange Bowl is known for a couple of things, of course, especially the lavish halftime show. You put a lot of work into that. Certainly, and that's one of the big things, and uh, we want people to enjoy not only the football game, but to come into Miami and to enjoy the uh, 
uh, the atmosphere and the weather and uh, and have the halftime show. And that's one of our big, uh, big events. Mr. Davidson, thank you very much for stopping by. Maybe some of the people watching will have a chance to go to Miami for the Orange Bowl. Cowboys lead at the half by three. We'll be back in a moment. That's Dr. Boger, the president of Oklahoma State University. You heard from him live a few moments ago. And Terry, I think the people around the country who hear this score probably think maybe Nebraska didn't show up. But I take a look at these statistics right here. No fluke. The Cowboys have outplayed them in the first half, no question. They've completely dominated the game. And, uh, you know, you can, and these stats will bear that out. 227 yards total offense to 135 for Nebraska. You know, that's almost double. Uh, it's just unbelievable. And, and, of course, the only thing that I see as a negative factor on the Cowboys side is the number of penalties. But they're really pretty even. So, the, you know, they need to eliminate those, eliminate the errors, the interception, the uh, fumble. And, uh, you know, then I think they're, they've got the hardest part is coming back in the second half, though, because the game is not won the first half. Absolutely not. And the coaches always talk about the last few minutes of the first half and the first few minutes of the second half. You take a look at the job the Cowboy defensive unit has done. There you see the statistics on the screen. Mike Rozier, the nation's second leading rusher, clearly the leading candidate for the Heisman Trophy coming into the game. Ten carries for 45 yards, so the Cowboys have done a good job against him. For Oklahoma State, uh, Sean Jones, 14 carries, 95 yards. Of course, the big one, that run of over 60 yards, which helped to set up the Larry Rhodes field goals. The Cowboys got on the board first, led it three to nothing, came back later with a 15-yard touchdown pass from Mike Jackson to Jamie Harris. Then there was the 62-yard touchdown pass uh, from Turner Gill uh, to Irving Pryor, and that's our halftime score. Oklahoma State leads 10 to 7. We'll look at some halftime highlights right after this. Time against the University of Nebraska, Oklahoma State's 10 and Nebraska 7. And Terry, we got some first half highlights, and of course, they were highlights for Oklahoma State. Now, the first play we're going to show you is a pass from Rusty Hildrew, who played about half of the first half. Ike Jackson came on then at, uh, in the second half. This is uh, Sean Jones right at the middle. This would be the long run. It's a perfect call. You know, on the, uh, on the blitz, Nebraska had called the blitz, and the Cowboys called the draw, and right up the middle, there's nobody there to get him. It's a foot race. He's caught but not at, before he gets 64 yards. That's 64 yards would set up this Roach field goal right here. That made it 3-0 Oklahoma State. 62-yard pass right here. Yeah, this is a play that you see quite often. You know, the, the two defensive backs, the safety goes for the interception, misses it. The cornerback misses the tackle, and it's a foot race, and Friars a great wing back. And it's, it's a touchdown. 7-3, to Nebraska leading at that point. Then the Cowboys came back to play very well themselves. As you look at that play again, Cowboys going for the interception, couldn't quite come up with it. Yeah, if he could have just touched the ball, of course, it's no play at all. And that's the only play Nebraska had in the first half. 135 yards offense, and there's 62 of it, you know. So it's uh, completely dominated by the Cowboys. That shows you how well the Cowboys played defensively. This is the pass to John Chesley, the tight end. He goes out of bounds inside the Nebraska 25-yard line. And then here's the touchdown pass. Ike Harris to Jamie Harris, or Ike Jackson, rather, to Jamie Harris in the end zone. And the Cowboys led it 10-7 at the half. One of the things I'm looking here as we look at this touchdown again, Nebraska really respects the speed of OSU sec, uh, wide receivers. They're trying to bump those guys. You see the corner falling down there. He tried to bump him, and he's been doing that earlier in the game. In fact, he kept him from catching one, and uh, this time it didn't work. Just a touchdown. Jamie Harris caught the touchdown. He has caught 19 passes this year, five of them for touchdowns. He's caught three passes in this game today, and I know that Jimmy Johnson, what is he saying at halftime right now? Well, he's got to say, you know, guys, keep your head down. Don't blow up uh, your... We don't want to get so excited and lose our, pose, our composure. We want to stay, do the things we've done in the first half, which are excellent. Now we've got to make some adjustments. They're going to make some adjustments. They're going to come in and, and pick up the blitz and, and try to run some plays that can hurt the blitz. I think the Cowboys now need to come out of that. You know, maybe fake it and stay out of it because, uh, but they're still going to have to gamble because we're still playing a great offensive team. The Cowboys have done a great job defensively, obviously holding Rozier to just 45 yards and 10 carries. What kind of adjustments do you think Nebraska might make offensively against the OSU defense? Well, I'll tell you one thing, that the defense, uh, the Cowboy defense is, has really not been blocked. I don't know what the problem is. If, if it's out quick and, uh, just quickness, just pure quickness, uh, beating the offensive lineman, but you might see more of some trap plays. They're, going to, they're getting across there so fast that we're going to look for that guard coming down and knocking them out and blowing right at the middle. So far, the Cowboys out playing the Cornhuskers. It's 10 to 7, Oklahoma State at the half. We'll be back with more in a moment. Good 10 to 7 here at Lewis Field. Less than a minute to go before we have the second half kickoff. And Nebraska likely will take the football because the Cowboys had the football 
to start the football game. And Oklahoma State played so well in the first half defensively and offensively. And Leslie O'Neill has uh, so far been the defensive star of the game. Well, that's for sure. He's just played an outstanding game on defense and very active. And like I said, at the halftime show, we're probably going to see some uh, traps and some things to kind of slow him down a little bit. Maybe some draws and screens. Ed Murray down on the field. Yeah, John, we wanted to get a comment with the coach, but you can imagine, I think they're both a little bit surprised by what's going on. So both of them concentrating on the second half. Maybe we'll get some comments with them after the game, John. All right, Jimmy Johnson right now has his team in the lead. Tom Osborne's team is uh, trailing 10 to 7. Nebraska ranked unanimously as number one in the country, and his team has already been compared favorably to the best teams that have ever played college football. Cowboys come out to kick off to start the second half, and uh, there you see the Cowboy bench, and you hear the Cowboy fans in the background. Uh, an upset brewing. There is a long way to go. This is an extremely explosive Nebraska football team, and uh, obviously a lot can happen, but the Cowboys have played very, very well, and no matter what happens, they have to feel that they're going to be in the running in any game they play the rest of the year. There's Kevin Godfrey, number four, out of Pontus. Mike you... Rozier, 10 carries, 45 yards. Sean Jones, 14 carries, 95 yards. Of course, the big one being the 64-yard run that helped to set up the Larry Roach field goal, which put Oklahoma State on the board first. You know, people have to understand that when you are blitzing, when you are gambling, they're going to have plays. Look at here, Oklahoma, Oklahoma and Texas, 7-7, a defensive struggle as we expected in the Cotton Bowl. We got a defensive struggle right here. Oklahoma State has played very well defensively, and the Cowboys will kick it off to start the second half. Mike Rozier and Jeff Smith back on the goal line for Nebraska. Nebraska going from west to east, defending the west goal to start things out here in the second half of the game. Kevin Godfrey to kick it off for Oklahoma State. Under that one a little bit, and Rozier may bring this one back from the two-yard line or the goal line. He does. Out to the 5, the 10, the 15. Tripped up at about the 18, across the 20, to the 25 and the 26-yard line. So Rozier brings it back 26 yards, and Nebraska will start out first and 10 at the 26. I'll tell you, anytime Mike Rozier gets the ball, there's a, your heart kind of flutters. Turner Gill, of course, will be a quarterback for Nebraska. He will have Mike Rozier in there. He will have Mark Schellen, a fullback. Irving Fryer will be the wingback. Ricky Simmons is split out to the left side. Gill keeps on the option, and again, the man who's in there, that time it's Matt Monger, the linebacker, and uh, the Cowboys have done a great job of anticipation. If you'll watch this, this is the option. The linebacker has got to take the quarterback on this play. Nobody's blocking him. He comes in, makes a great play. Everybody else was pretty well blocked. Munger has to do that on a on an option play. Everybody's responsible for one man. Just underway in the second half. Cowboys lead it 10 to 7. 14 minutes, 29 seconds to go in the third quarter. Turner Gill is the quarterback, dropping to throw on a second and 10. Out to Rozier, and he throws it away. Too short. I tell you, the linebacker there was just played that excellent. He was right there with him. Even if he'd have caught it, I don't think he could have gone very far. As we watch the screen here. The outside receiver is running an out and up, get the corner out of the way, and the linebacker comes out here. He's getting a block there, but he was right there. David Webb was number 33, was the man there to, to be right on top of Rozier. Had he even made the catch, he wouldn't have gone anywhere because Webb was there. Third and 10, obvious passing situation for Nebraska. Will the Huskers throw? Gill wants to do that. He's got protection in the pocket. Over the middle to Rozier, but he can't hang on to the football. So Nebraska will have to punt it away. Rod Brown was the man who was out there, along with Adam Hines. You know, the best the best pass defense is the pass rush. This time, Gill had time, and he waited and waited for Rozier to break clear, which he does, and Rozier just drops the ball. Yeah. Good defensive play there by the safety. Here it is again. Good blocking in there. He's got plenty of time. That's Adam Hines, I believe, that is stripping the ball there. Had he not hit him, it, he could have caught it. Bobby Riley, the freshman out of Stroud, makes the catch at the 31-yard line. Heavy traffic back to about the 34, but the Cowboys have good field position. You can catch all the important news you need to start your day on our new Newsline 9 Morning Edition. Guy Ashley, Mignon Merchant, Larry Nobles. Larry has the weather. Followed by the CBS Morning News with Bill Curtis and Diane Sawyer. That's our new Morning Edition at 6 a.m., the CBS Morning News at 7. All the news you need to begin your day right here on TV9. Cowboys will take it first and 10 on their own 34-yard line with the lead. Leading 10 to 7, and Rusty Hilger is back in there at quarterback for Oklahoma State. Played most of the first quarter, a little bit in the second quarter. Ike Jackson came in, did a good job. Hilger is back in there now. Harris goes in motion. Now Jamie comes back to the right side. He has the touchdown pass. There's the give to Sean Jones. Looking for some running room, a gain of perhaps five, out to about the 40-yard line. 
I'll tell you, the Cowboys had two guys leading up through that hole. If you look here, there's the guard, there's a the fullback, and the center's in there, and Sean Jones just is able to kind of sneak through that crack and picks up five yards on the play. Sean Jones now, 15 carries, 100 yards. The big one being that 64-yard run in the first half that set up the field goal by Larry Roach. The Oklahoma City Southeast Junior, Rusty Hilger is at quarterback. Now for Jimmy Johnson's team. Second and five at the 39-yard line. A give again is to Jones. Looking for running room left side. There's nothing there. The gain is perhaps one. John, one of the things the coaches want to tell their guys at halftime is we've got to go out second half and establish some type of control. You know, Nebraska came out, get, they get the kick out, the kick off, and they really don't do anything with it. So now the Cowboys want to do something. They want to eat up that clock, I'll tell you right now. For Oklahoma State, it's a third and four situation. Ed Murray is on the field. Yes, John, James Spencer on that last offensive play for Nebraska hurt his shoulder. He's working under his shoulder pads right now. We'll have to see if he'll be able to come back. Back to you. Spencer, of course, one of the most important members of that Oklahoma State defensive unit. Rusty Hilger is the quarterback for the Cowboys, a third and four from the 40. Jones, again, he's not going to get it. Back to the line of scrimmage, and John Conway will come on, and the Cowboys will have to punt it away. Mike Knox was in on the tackle. They tried to do what they've been doing all day, and this time the Nebraska defense was able to penetrate. We'll be going live to the Penn State-Alabama game immediately following our game here in Stillwater. We'll join it in progress, so stay right here on TV9. There's more football to come after this game. 12 minutes, 17 seconds to go in the third quarter. John Conway is on to do the punting. Jeff Smith has it at the 10-yard line. Looks for running room on the left side. Cowboys down. Great stop in there, but they don't get him down. Now they do at the 7-yard line. Nebraska with poor field position. We'll be back in just a moment. Nebraska with poor field position to start out. First and 10 at the Cornhusker 8. The gain is only one for Mike Rogier up the middle. James Spencer, who was injured on the last Nebraska series back in the ballgame now. Cowboys did a great job of punt coverage that time. Roderick Fisher and Charles Crawford were the people who stopped Jeff Smith back on the 8-yard line. Really no game as Rogier got back to the line of scrimmage. It is second and 10, 11 minutes, 36 seconds to go. Gill is rolling left, looking for Fryer down the field. It catches him. Is it Fryer? Be Jeff Smith, the tailback, who was out there to make the catch. That was Bruce Kimball. Excuse me, Bruce Kimball, number 88. His older brother, Bobby, played at Oklahoma in the mid-70s. We'll watch the pass right here from the left side. He just went down and ran a simple curl pattern. There was three defenders there, and the ball went right through all of them. There's one, there's two, and he makes a great diving catch on about the 24-yard line. Well, Kimball gets his team out of some trouble because Nebraska now has a first and 10 at the Nebraska 24-yard line. Up the middle, Shula the fullback, and no room there, and the Cowboys have stuffed it once again. I tell you, it's tough to run on this Cowboy defense. They are impressive. Well, you know, they came into the game fifth in rushing defense in the country, giving up an average of only 60 yards a game. Again, John Washington and Leslie O'Neill in on the stop. OSU is 10th in total defense in the country, giving up 261 yards a game, giving up an average of only 11 points a game. I don't believe that really anyone, perhaps the Cowboys themselves, expected Oklahoma State to play as well defensively as they played this afternoon. Second and eight for Nebraska. Clock is moving, 10 minutes, 45 seconds to go third period. End around, this is Irving Fryer. Tough man to catch in the open field. He's got some blocking. Last man to get him is Chris Rockins. Can he get him out of bounds? He does. Good play by Rockins. He saved the sure touchdown right there for the Cowboys, but Nebraska has great field position after the long run. One of the things about running a blitz as we watch the play here on the reverse is everybody's man-to-man. -man. Rockins was downfield with his man and didn't even see the reverse. And by the time he, by the time he turns around, here comes Fryer, who's an excellent uh, wing back, coming down the sideline, and Rockins is able to get him out of bounds. Irving Fry, the man who made the long run, was taken up on the play, so he comes out momentarily. Shane Swanson is in there now at the wing back for Nebraska. Huskers first and ten inside Oklahoma State territory, but the Cowboys again stack it up at the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you, Leslie O'Neill made another great defensive play as we watch here. He comes, well, this is the reverse. They're showing the reverse again. There was nobody out here. He gets a good block there on the defensive end, and it's just a foot race, and they were in a blitz, and Therefore, everybody was going the other direction. Leslie O'Neill made that last play, John. Irving Fryer being attended to on the Nebraska bench. Second and nine for the Cornhuskers on the Oklahoma State 32-yard line. Gill rolling left, looking to throw over the middle. That's his tight end. 
And this is going to be a touchdown for Todd Crane. They ran that very same play to Todd Crane against Penn State, and they ran it for a touchdown, and that time he was wide open. John, what they did here is they sent, is a misdirection. They sent everybody this way and, uh, and then let the tight end just sneak across the middle, and nobody was within 15 yards of it. The only thing that would have stopped Crane on that play right there was himself. He almost stumbled and fell, but he got into the end zone. So Nebraska, an explosive football team, as we all know, scores very quickly. 14-10, Nebraska goes six plays, 93 yards to score. A 32-yard touchdown pass from Turner Gill to Todd Crane is tied in. Livingston will do the kicking off for Nebraska. We've got nine minutes and 53 seconds to go in the third quarter. Cowboys trailing by four. Nebraska scoring in two minutes and nine seconds. The big play, the end around to Irving Fryer. More on him in just a moment. This is Jamie Harris taking it at the eight-yard line, looking for running room on the right side. Can he get around the He's corner? He's got it. He does. The 20, and he lost his balance out of bounds at the 24. Ed Murray on the sideline. John, behind me, you can see Irving Fryer has just now gotten up his right knee. It looks like he's twisted his knee. And on the touchdown play, Mark Moore slipped. The turf is quite damp. Moore was guarding the tight end. He fell down, and that allowed the tight end to score. And he definitely was open, as uh, Terry Brown has pointed out to you. Jamie Harris running back the kickoff. Cowboys will start first and 10 at their own 24-yard line. I tell you, Jamie Harris almost broke this. He gets around the corner. There's a wall, and he, he just this little burst of speed. He lost his footing, and he falls down. Cowboys getting some points on the board, looking to get some points on the board. Rusty Hilger. Gives to Sean Jones, right side, dances through the line of scrimmage. Gain is about five, out to about the 29. Mark Dom was in on the tackle. Good run there by Sean Jones over the right side. You know, John, the thing that we keep bringing up, Nebraska still, they're leading the ball game, but they've still only had two big plays. Last one is six plays, 93 yards, two minutes, nine seconds off the clock. The 33-yard pass from Turner Gill to Todd Crane. And where we stand right now is Nebraska leading 14 to 10, Nine minutes, 15 seconds to go, third quarter. Clock is moving. Rusty Hilger is the quarterback for Oklahoma State. Scott Harris on the left and Malcolm Lewis on the right. Rusty rolling left, looking for Harris. He hit him. Will it count? He made the tackle, or did he? No, it bounced off it the bounced turf. bounced into the turf. He had one of those in the first half, too, and that one, I suspect, was not as close. I tell you, Ed may be right down there because they are slipping. Jamie's slipping every time he runs a curl. Look at that score. Alabama and Penn State, 7-7 in the first quarter. Alabama unbeaten, ranked in the top five in the country against Penn State. We will go to that game when this game here is over. Cowboys now face a third and five situation at their own 29-yard line. You can sense that the crowd knows this is a big third down play for Oklahoma State. Hilger looking to throw across the middle to Harris. It's knocked away by Neil Harris, the cornerback, and Jamie couldn't quite make the grab, and the Cowboys will have to punt it away. I was watching Jamie on this particular play. He kind of he just kind of lulled the defensive back to sleep and then cut across the middle in the back. Harris makes a great defensive play. John Conway is on to do the punting for the Cowboys. Coming into the game, John was averaging nearly 44 yards a kick. He punted twice in the first half for an average of 42 yards. End over end, goes down at about the 32 and then rolls, gets a good Oklahoma State bounce. Shane Swanson picks it up, he is knocked down. One of the Cowboys lost the helmet down there. Ken Montgomery, reserve defensive back, was hitting hard, losing his helmet, but the Cornhuskers will go to work at the 25-yard line. This is not the type of kick Conley is normally noted for, but he does get a good bounce here, and just as the defensive back picks the ball up, he's hit hard there by the defensive back and loses his helmet in the process. Shane Swanson is a man who brought it back. He stays in the game as a wing back because we told you that Irving Fryer, who caught the touchdown pass in the first half, set up the touchdown here in the second half, is on the sidelines right now with a knee injury. Whether or not he returns remains to be seen. Gill looks to throw. He does to Ricky Simmons, who cannot hang on at the 45-yard line. Adam Hines was there defensively. Colorado leading Missouri, and you think things aren't bad in Missouri. Warren Powers is going to be looking for work, I have a feeling, after this game. 17-0, or after this season, 17-0 Colorado leading at the half. Kansas and Iowa State. Iowa State leading by a point at 14-13. Eight minutes and 41 seconds to go in the third quarter here. Nebraska with the ball and leading, but only 14-10. Many fellow would be a lot more than that at this point in the game. Rogier up the middle. Keeps his balance. Great run by Rogier. 
Adam Hines finally drags him down, but that's a great running back, and he showed us why there. I'll tell you what made this play. Steincooler, the great right guard for the Nebraska Cornhuskers, seals the inside off. The Rosier right there almost loses his footing. It's just unbelievable balance, and he's able to pick up great yardage on the play. And I miscalled it. I said it was Adam Hines, whose number is 14. Mark Moore, the freshman out of Nacogdoches, Texas, his number is 44. He's the man who finally runs him down, but that's a great play by Rozier, great blocking by that Nebraska offensive line. 14-10, Nebraska leading inside Oklahoma State territory at the 44-yard line. Fullback, Shaleen up the middle. To the 30, he's knocked forward. That's another first down for the Cornhuskers. I'll tell you, somebody has said something to this Nebraska offensive line. All of a sudden, they're just blowing gaping holes up to the middle. Shaleen, who's had a tough day all day, picks up good yardage right up the middle. Adam Hines come up, comes up to meet him, but he's kind of knocked backward. It's another Nebraska first down. Huskers have it, first to 10 at the OSU 30-yard line. Pitch back to Rozier. Rozier is knocked out of bounds. Rockins was the first man to hit him. But he still gained two or three after about the 32-yard line. There's no doubt that this Oscar... Uh, Nebraska team has got a tremendous offense and it's just it's amazing to sit up here and watch them move the ball against a very fine defense. Mark Shaleen is the fullback. Mike Rozier is the tailback. Turner Gill looking things over. He wants a timeout. He'll talk with Tom Osborne. Eight minutes, 13 seconds to go in the third quarter. There's a timeout on the field. Nebraska leading 14-10. We're back in a moment. field in Stillwater. Eight minutes, 13 seconds to go. Cowboys trailing 14-10. They played a great game against a very explosive Nebraska team. You can get your top rail magazine by writing two, 203 Gallagher Hall here in Stillwater at Oklahoma State University. That's a publication of the athletic department. It gives you all the news you need to know during football season and throughout the year about Cowboy athletics. Second and eight for Nebraska at the Oklahoma State 27-yard line. Mike Rozier inside, almost inside the 20, right at the 20. So the gain is eight. It'll be very close to a first down. It'll be just short because they'll spot it just outside the 20. John Washington, the nose guard, in on the stop for Oklahoma State. David Webb, defensive end, is in there to help make the stop. Seven minutes, 55 seconds to go. Oklahoma and Texas, 7-7 at the half, down in Dallas at the Cotton Bowl. Julian up the middle, first down, gain of three. Down to about the Oklahoma State 16-yard line. A great game here in Stillwater. Oklahoma State leading Nebraska at the half, 10 to seven. On a 15-yard pass from Ike Jackson to Jamie Harris. Nebraska came out and scored six plays, 93 yards, taking just two minutes off the clock. Scoring on a 33-yard pass from Turner Gill to Todd Frame to tight end. Nebraska driving right now, facing a first and 10 at the Oklahoma State 17-yard line. A great running back will make a great play. Will it be a touchdown? It may have been recovered by Oklahoma State. I think the Cowboys have it. The, Cow the ball was on the ground. I saw a Cowboy with the ball, but uh, nobody agrees with me right now. <laughs> you know, I was just getting ready to say, John, they're blowing the line away. It's unbelievable. That's a tremendous offensive line performance by Nebraska. Cowboys have got it. I don't know who's got the football, but what a break. Rodney Harding, I think, is the man who came up with the ball. Rodney Harding was a junior out of Oklahoma City, Millwood. What a break because Nebraska played very well. Well, when you have a great back like Rozier fighting for those extra yards, that's when you get the fumbles, and he got it. That was a great individual play by Rozier. Once he got by the line of scrimmage, he did the rest of it himself. And as you mentioned, fighting for the yardage, but what a big break for Oklahoma State. I was just getting ready to say a few minutes ago that, that the OSU, we talked about them not coming out and blitzing, and I was saying I think maybe they need to go back to it. They lined up in it, but they're still, this, the line of scrimmage is where they're getting moved back now. Break for the Cowboys. Can they capitalize on the break? First and 10, Oklahoma State at their own 20-yard line. Jones, gain is only one as the Nebraska defense pursued very well. I'll tell you, Ken Graber, the uh, middle guard there, just nobody touched him. He came across there and was able to get Jones down for maybe a yard pickup. 
Six minutes and 51 seconds to go in the third quarter. Cowboys will look at a second and nine. Rusty Hilger has been the quarterback here for Oklahoma State in the second half. Started the game as he has the first four games. Played a little more than a quarter. Ike Jackson came in and played very well in the second quarter. Cowboys at second and nine. Hilger rows left. Looks to throw. Malcolm Lewis. That's Jamie Harris. Across the 30 to the 35. A first down Oklahoma State. The Cowboys have had uh, Jamie Harris coming from the outside running the curl. This time they put him in the slot. He comes down the field as you see Hilger roll out to his left. And he breaks to the outside and he's away from all the defenders. Makes the catch. Gets up across the 30 yard line to about the 35. Mike McCashlin and Brent Clark were in there to make the stop for Nebraska. Six minutes, 20 seconds to go now in the third quarter. Cowboys with a first and 10 at their own 35 yard line. Sean Jones, left side, no running room there. Nebraska defense pursuing well. Scott Strasburg of the defensive end was the man who came up to make the stop. The loss is uh, about one and a half, so it'll be a second and 11. Strasburger was not to be denied on that particular play. <laughs> he's, a, he's one of their bigger linemen, 205. Some of the fans here at Lewis Field enjoying the day. Been a threat of rain, it's been overcast, but they haven't had any rain yet. Temperature at game time, about 64, might be 66 now, but very, very pleasant to watch football. Rusty Hilger with Kelly Cook and Sean Jones. The give is to Jones. Uh, gain is perhaps two. Rob Stuckey is the man who made the stop for Nebraska. Great defensive tackle. We haven't heard much from him today because the Cowboys played so well offensively in the first half. You know, one thing Sean Jones and the whole Cowboy line is facing this second half is a little bit more aggressive defense. They... Uh, kind of were passive the first half, but they're firing out of there now. Big third down play for Oklahoma State. It's third and nine at the OSU 36-yard line. Hilger's looking across the middle. The ball is intercepted. Mike this McCashlin, the monster back, made the interception for Nebraska. It was a classic interception, a great play. It is a, as fine a defensive play as you'll ever see. McCashlin read it all the way, stepped in front of the receiver right here, and just makes a tremendous interception and throw it's the uh, Cowboy drive. Well, that's a break that goes the other way against the Cowboys, and Nebraska has the ball in great field position at the Oklahoma State 48-yard line. Four minutes and 58 seconds to go through the quarter. Cowboys trail it. They played Nebraska tough. It's 14-10. Nebraska leads. Turner Gill gives to Mike Rogier. Left side looks for running room. Got three, perhaps four, maybe five, six. He will not quit, he John. Won't. He won't. <laughs> He had, he had he was dragging Munger and, and uh, Sarah Spencer and a couple others. There's the young man that made the interception, McCashlin. And we're told that Irving Fryer, the wingback, the great wingback for Nebraska, is back in the game. Now we've got another Nebraska player down on the field. I think he's got cramps, John. That's an indication when you Mike grab Rogier. your toe. When you grab that toe, you're trying to get that calf muscle stretched out a little bit. That's what he's got there. You can see they're rubbing that calf. He's got some cramps. Mike Rozier is now over 111 yards, 111 yards, 16 carries. OSU ticket outlets in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. In Oklahoma City, the Warranty Bank and Trust in Tulsa, the Fourth National Bank in Ponca City, the First National Bank, and Enid, the Security National Bank. For tickets or information, you can call 1-800-522-6858 for your OSU tickets. Mike Rozier is still being attended to by the trainer. And Terry said it certainly appears to be a cramp down there, perhaps in that right leg. Rozier now with 16 carries, 111 yards. Sean Jones, 20 carries, 107 yards. When play resumes, Nebraska facing a second and three at the Oklahoma State, uh, about 41-yard line. You know, it's hard for these schools from the north to come down here, and even though it's cool for us, it's still a different thing for them. And if they haven't taken care of the electrolytes and the salts and uh, salt tablets in their body, they're going to have some cramps. Rogier leaving, as you can see, being helped off by the trainers, and whether or not it's a cramp or perhaps some kind of strain, we'll see, but he doesn't look to be seriously hurt. That will mean that Jeff Smith will be in there then at the eye back position, and he continues the tradition of great backup tailbacks. You know, Rozier had, uh, had 45 yards in the first half. He's now, he now has 111, so he's come alive this second half. Second and three for Nebraska right at the 40-yard line. Huskers lead at 14-10. Four minutes, 32 seconds to go third quarter. There's the fullback, Mark Shaleen, for the first down. 
Matt Monger was in on the stop, the junior out of Miami. One of the adjustments the uh, Cornhuskers have made, John, is misdirection. And that's how they threw the touchdown pass to the tight end. They're starting to send people one way and let the backs go the other. They, and the reason they do that is an aggressive defense. Huskers coming out now with a first and 10 at the Oklahoma State just outside the 35 yard line. Smith, the tailback, carries ahead uh, for a gain of almost five, more than five, so it'll be about a second and five at the OSU 30. Rodney Harding in on the tackle. The Cornhuskers are starting to get about five yards on that first down play, and that's what the Cowboy defense did not want them to do. The line is moving that defensive line at this point. Ball control, of course, is very important. That first down play is very important. Instead of facing maybe a second and eight, they're facing second and five, second and four. His coaches are fond of saying that's what moves the chains. And Nebraska's doing that right now, second and five. Fullback that time could get nothing at all. Game tackled by Oklahoma State, and it'll be a third and five. I'll tell you, John, one of the Cowboy defenders literally jumped over the center here. That was Munger, and they are blitzing again. Munger just leapfrog. He looked like a frog jumping right over the center. Cowboy defense has played very well. A big third down play here. Third and five of the ball in the 31-yard line. Turner Gill, Mark Shuleen. Smith now goes in motion from the eye-back position. Gill looking to throw. He's being chased to Smith. It's incomplete. Nebraska will likely kick a field goal. We just got word, John, that Rozier did have cramps, and he'll be back. As you see here on the screen, they throw the pass out in the flat area. It's a little low. It's going to hit the ground. Well, we'll see if they go for the field goal. It's fourth and five. Kimball comes into the ball game now, apparently with the play from Tom Osborne. And they're not going to try to kick the field goal. They're going to go for it, fourth and five. Well, it'd be a 47-yard field goal. Well, Snyder is not a great kicker. He's kicked one uh, 39 yards, but he's had to kick only once this year. So it's a fourth and five situation for Nebraska. Nebraska looking to make the play. Gill gets it away, and he was hit down there. You know, I, I know I have to look up the number because he hasn't. Stanley Blair, who has not played that much for Oklahoma State, came in blitzing from that cornerback position on the right side and hit Gills. He released a great play. John, I don't know if you saw it or not, but the Cowboy defense did not have a right tackle that time. I was scared dead they were going to run right over that way. But they got out of it. So they were looking past Stanley Blair, and I'm sure that was the first time he's been in the game today. We've not seen Stanley Blair. He played a little bit last year, hasn't played that much this year except on specialty teams. And he came in to hit Gill just as he threw it. The Cowboys now have the ball with two minutes and 50 seconds to go in the third quarter, first and 10 at their own 30. And Ike Jackson has come in at quarterback now for Oklahoma State. Sean Jones, gain of, well, maybe two. Nebraska's toughened up defensively. We're seeing more and more slippage, as, as Ed told us about at halftime. This field, I guess, getting wetter and wetter. When you get an AstroTurf, John, what you get going one direction, it's just like carpet. It lays down, and if you're going that way, it's harder to keep your feet. And it's it's just humidity, really, and moisture in the air because we've not had rain. Right. It, it looks like it's threatening rain. has looked that way most of the day, but the humidity at game time was 89%, so there's a lot of water in the air, although it's not falling. Gain for Jones was two. It's second and eight for Oklahoma State. Pitch back to Sean again looking for him. It looked like he slipped down that time. They're really having trouble with this turf. They're slipping, uh, especially over on that right side of the field. Jones gets the pitch here and has a pretty good block there by the lead back, the fullback hook, but there's not a, he slips there and falls down. Deshaun Jones, 22 carries, 111 yards, big third down play again for the Cowboys. Really all of the game, the second half has been played in the Oklahoma State end of the field. Nebraska's had the field position. Cowboys with a third and six here, a minute 42 to go third quarter. is complete to the tight end. I believe that's Barry Hanna who came across to make the catch, number 82. Barry Hanna just runs a simple, he goes down about five yards and breaks to the outside. He's open, but the bad thing about it, he's not far enough for the first down. They're on about a yard short, a yard and a half, so John Conway will come on and the Cowboys will have to kick it away. The Cow Cowboys really have been pretty fortunate this particular period really have because Nebraska's been knocking at the door the entire period. We've got a minute and one second to go. Conway's boot from his own 25. 
Smith takes it at his own 19. Smith dances his way up the field. Smith is going to get a long return out of this. Cowboys managed to stop him at the 40-yard line, but that was a great return by Jeff Smith. You know, last week against Tulsa, the Cowboys' special teams kicking game was just superlative. And this week, uh, they're, get, they're letting them get away too much. Charles Crawford finally made the stop for Oklahoma State, but it was a great return by Jeff Smith, who really didn't have any blocking. That was just an individual play there. And again, they're back in uh, Cowboy territory, and that's not where that defense wants to be. And the defense been on the field the whole quarter. All right, Turner Gill is the quarterback. 46 seconds to go in the third quarter. Gill pitches back to Rogiers back in the game, and he fights his way for about seven yards. Now down to the field, and Ed Murray. You've been mentioning uh, the slipping problem. As you get closer to the sideline, there's actually standing water. You can rub your hand along the grass, and you'll have a little rooster tail of water come up, and it gets worse as you get towards the sidelines. John? We've had a lot of slippage here in the third quarter, no question about it. 22 seconds. This will be the last play of the third quarter. Nebraska's second and five at the Oklahoma State 34-yard line. Friars back in the game, John. Friars in the game. So is Rogier. Both of them left with leg injuries, but came back in there. It's not going to be a first down. The stop was made by Rodney Harding. It's going to be third and about uh, three, third and two, perhaps. And that's the end of the third quarter. Cowboys have played them tough, but Nebraska leads 14-10. We'll be back with more after this. Sunday on TV9, entertainment this week at 10.30, following Newsline 9 and Ed Murray's Pro Football Scoreboard Show tomorrow night. The Cowboys have played a great game this afternoon against Nebraska. As you look at Barry Hanna and John Chesley, the tight ends for Oklahoma State. Cowboys trail 14-10. Nebraska came into this game favored by almost four touchdowns. Cowboys led at the half, 10-7. Nebraska came back to score in a 93-yard drive here in the third period. There have been a couple of breaks that have gone for each team. Right now, Nebraska has the football. Third down, three to go on the Oklahoma State 31-yard line as we'll start play here in just a moment in the fourth quarter. John, one of the things the offense needs to be doing over on that sideline as we look at J Coach Johnson is they need to get the ball and get a drive going. This defense is going to be tired very quickly. The defense has held up well so far, but they've been under tremendous pressure here in the third period. Turner Gill is the quarterback. Third and three for Nebraska at the Oklahoma State 31. Shaleen is the fullback. That's Jeff Smith, the eye back. He's going to have the first down inside the 30 at about the 27. In the first half, we saw where they did, they weren't able to get anywhere. They were getting hit behind the line. Now they've got two and three blockers leading the way. Look at the fullback here, the guard, the tackle, getting a good block on Webb there. Irving Fryer comes back in the game. We're told that Mike Rozier, the great running back of Nebraska, is out of the game again with cramps. So Smith is in there at the tailback spot for the Ford Huskers. It's one uh, first and ten. Gill pitches back to Smith, makes the move at the 30, inside the 25 to the 23. Good pursuit, though, by the Oklahoma State defensive unit. Adam Hines is over there from his free safety spot to make the stop. 14 minutes and 26 seconds to go now in the game. Nebraska leads 14-10. On the toss here, Jeff Smith trying to get outside, and Fisher makes a good play. Just, if nothing else, strip the blocker there. We were just told, John, that Rozier has cramps in both thighs and is in severe pain on the side of Second and six for Nebraska at the Oklahoma State 24-yard line. Pitch back goes to Smith again. He fights his way forward across the 20, and he's going to be close to a first down, perhaps a, a foot or maybe less than a yard short of that first down. And again, Smith continues in the tradition of great Nebraska backup people at that tailback spot because Smith coming into the game had carried 42 times for 222 yards. He's averaging five yards a carry, so he's no slouch. He'd be starting for most teams, and he's in there right now. For Mike Rogier. It'd be fun to run behind that line too, John. It sure would. Make a lot of running backs look very, very good at the University of Nebraska. Third and one for Nebraska. The Corn Huskers moving the ball inside the 20 at the Oklahoma State 18 yard line. Straight ahead, Smith. It's going to be close. They may have stopped him. But they're in four down territory, so even if he didn't get it, they're going to come right back with that player, one very similar. Well, John, that time the left guard was trying to, or the right guard tried to trap. And he just slipped, and uh, there's some problems in the line now. Well, they give him the first down. The ball was just across where it needed to be, so they will spot it at right about the 17, just inside the 17-yard line. And Nebraska now first and 10 at the Oklahoma State 17. You remember in the third quarter, not too long ago, Nebraska was knocking at the door. Rogier fumbled at the goal line. The Cowboys recumbered, or Nebraska would be leading 21-7. 
21 to 10. Gill's pass into the end zone is intercepted by number one, Roderick Fisher. Tremendous defensive play by the Pokes, and again, the Cowboys make the play when they have to make it. I'll tell you what, as you watch Turner Gill here, Turner Gill, this is really his fault. He forces the ball into the corner. He's won the touchdown pass, and he's a great quarterback, but Fisher makes a great play. Now, the Cowboys are not out of the woods. It's a great play by Fisher, but they have the ball inside the one-yard line, so field position could be a little better. They got 99 yards to go. But uh, they were driving. I'd rather have it there. Than I think <laughs> so, because Nebraska clearly, unless they made a mistake, which they did make, and throwing the ball into coverage like that, uh, Nebraska was going to get three out of it, if nothing else. So the Cowboys trail it, 14-10. Got to sustain something offensively right here. They did it in the first half. 13 minutes to go in the game. Ike Jackson remains in there at quarterback for Oklahoma State. Kelly Cook and Sean Jones. Jackson on the quarterback sneak. The gain is a yard back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Well, he's just wanting some breathing room, John. He just wants to get out a little bit if he can. If they have to punt and they're not able to get a first down, Conway's had an excellent season, but the wind is in his face, at least as we look at the flags on the other side of the stadium. So. Again, the entire second half has been played in the Oklahoma State end of the field. Cowboys need a big play. They need that, that run from Sean Jones with a long pass to Chesley like they had in the first half. Second and nine. Cowboys have the ball on their own one-yard line. Sean Jones, no running room again. It's going to be third and nine. He may have gained a yard. Doug really Herman in on the stop. Just no place to go there down that tight. And I don't think Nebraska's gambling. I don't think they're blitzing or doing anything different. They're just lining heads up and playing straight 5-2 defense. They don't want that long run either. Key play for the Cowboys here, third and eight, with the clock moving at 11 minutes and 53 seconds to go in the game now. They need a big play desperately. Passing situation. Jackson may be trapped in the end zone unless he can get out of there and throw the ball down the field. And no flag is thrown, but I'll tell you what, Ike sure did throw that one away, didn't he? <laughs> that, that is a good play. A penalty is better than a safety. I would think that the official could have thrown the flag there, and you really yeah. couldn't have complained about that at all because there was no Oklahoma State player within 30 yards of that one. But the Cowboys will have to kick the football. John Conway will do the punting from his own end zone. And Cowboys have got to cover this. They haven't covered the last couple very well. Smith is back there along with Irving Fryer, whose leg apparently is all right. It is unbelievable the field position Nebraska's had this second half. Conway to punt from his own end zone. 11 minutes, 38 seconds to go in the game. Conway gets a good punt out to the right side. Fryer has got it at the 35, dances up to about the 25, and you talk about field position. Nebraska's had it here in the second half of the game. That was not a very good punt by Connolly. Uh, it only went about 30, 25, 30 yards, and uh, that's going to hurt. We've had a great game today. We're going to have a great game for you next week. Oklahoma against Oklahoma State here at Lewis Field. Our pregame show at 1, and the kickoff is at 1.30. Officials have called a timeout to take one of the Nebraska players off the field. Fryer, who just returned the punt and left earlier with a leg injury, and this time he's needing more help to get off the field than he did the first time. Well, this game is far from being over, but the Cornhuskers know they've been in a ball game today. They have, they have been hit and hit and hit again. Tremendous effort by Oklahoma State, but you can't ask the defense to do it much longer. They've done it the entire second half, and they've got their backs to the wall right now. First and 10 for the Cornhuskers on the Oklahoma State 25. Turner Gill pitched back to Smith. Gain of about four. O'Neill. Leslie O'Neill makes that stop again. North Carolina 30, Wake Forest 10, final. So North Carolina remains unbeaten, the number four team in the country. Ohio State having problems with Purdue, leading 12 to 7 at the half as you look at Tom Osborne. In his 11th year as the head coach at the University of Nebraska, Florida beating Vanderbilt 29 to 10. Second and six for Nebraska, the Oklahoma State 21. Mike Rozier back in the game, dances across the 20 to the 15 to the 13. He's driven back by the Oklahoma State defense, but there's a penalty flag down, perhaps a hold on the Nebraska offensive line. Well, we can only hope that. <laughs> I mean, he had all kinds of room on that right side. Look at the lead, the blocker here leading there to the right. He really doesn't do a lot, but Rozier is just unbelievable back. He keeps his balance, he keeps spinning, trying to get everything he can get. But we do have a flag. Now they're talking to the Cowboys, so 
Holding penalty against Nebraska. I may be wrong, John, but that may be the first penalty of the second half. I, I, I believe that it is. I think that's the first flag we've had, and what a break for Oklahoma State. The ball now goes back to the 26-yard line. and We've got holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty, second down. I think somebody, they just said that Friars got his leg wrapped again, so he's having some trouble with that five. Nebraska second and 10 from the Oklahoma State 26 yard line. Gill looks to throw cross court to Simmons. Did he catch it? He did. Tell you what they did there, John. Uh, the cornerback comes up on a blitz and the safety, watch here, the cornerback comes flying in on a blitz and the safety's got to go out there and cover him and he just can't get there quick enough. There's Adam Hines coming in late. Well, that was a gamble and it almost was an expensive one. Michigan beats Michigan State 42 nothing Simmons is the man who made the catch inside the 20 yard line so it'll be a third and four now for Nebraska big play defensively coming up for Oklahoma State Maryland beats Syracuse 34 13 10 minutes even to go in the ball game the clock is moving Turner Gill Rogier powers his way but he'll be close to a first down but not quite there and the old axiom when you're away you go for the first down. Rozier goes to the right side here. He gets four and five yards a clip. He's got 116 yards and 16 carries, 114 yards and 17 carries. David Webb was the man in there on the stop. It's a fourth and one play for Nebraska. Huskers are going to go for it, of course, on the 16-yard line of Oklahoma State. Fourth and one, 9.27 to go in the game. Rozier with a first down inside the 10 yard line to the nine. So Nebraska will have the ball first and goal at the nine yard line. I tell you, Rozier almost broke that into the end zone. And that's usually what happens if you, as you look here, he gets away and trips right there or he would have walked into the end zone. On a short yardage play like that, you've got everybody up tight. If you've ever clear that first line, you're gone. Rozier has shown us a lot here in the second half. He was held in check at the first half, but really the sign of a great back is not the guy who can run 85 yards but the guy that can get the six or seven tough ones and he can do it both and he did that time it's balls actually on the 10 but I don't believe they can get a first down it's right on the 10. Gil to Rozier and they battle him out of bounds at the 10 yard line so there'll be no gain on the play. John this is an unbelievable play. Rozier, I mean uh, Gill goes back to throw the ball is hit by a defensive player the ball goes up in the air, come, look, as you watch the screen here. He's hit there, the ball bounces right back in his hands and then he's able to throw it to Rozier. They don't teach that. <laughs> that's, that's the luck of the Irish, I guess. Turner Gill at quarterback for Nebraska. They are 22 and one with Turner Gill as the starting quarterback at Nebraska. He's lost only one game to Penn State last year. Second and 10, the ball is on the 10 yard line, puts it on the field, who's got it? The Oklahoma State, the Cowboys will recover. I believe it's David Webb, number 33, the man on the football. David Webb is the man on the football. The junior college transfer has played so well for the Cowboys. As you look here, Turner Gill comes out and the guard there. Actually, Harry Griminger hits the ball and Gill cannot get his hands on it. And David Webb, the middle linebacker, comes up with the ball. I feel like I've just missed a car wreck. But Tur Turner Gill looked like a man looking for a flashlight in the dark. He couldn't find the ball at all. Again, another big break for the Cowboys, oh. but they made it themselves. They, they did a good job defensively, and they did a great job. They still trail 14-10, eight minutes and 50 seconds to go, and the Cowboys are a long way from the goal line. First and 10 on their own 15-yard line. Ike Jackson is a quarterback. It's been a great football game this afternoon here in Stillwater. Jackson, the pitch back to Sean Jones. They fake the end around. They give the end around to Jamie Harris, but Strasburger is not fooled at all, and they battle Harris out of bounds at the seven-yard line. The loss will be seven yards. They tried the reverse uh, after a turnover like that. You see some type of big play trying to score quickly, and the Nebraska Cornhuskers were not fooled at all. Well, that's a big play against the Cowboys, and we talk about the importance of first down plays. They have got to come up with a drive here and get it out of there. They have had the worst field position. Look at that score. Oklahoma leading Texas 10-7 in the third quarter. I assume that Mr. Leisher's kicked a field goal for the Sooners, and Sooners battling Texas in a defensive battle, and that's what we've got right here. Cowboys trying to upset the number one team in the country. Jackson rolls to the right side, looking for someone to throw to. May have to scramble, does, and goes out of bounds at the 14, but he's not really back to the original line of scrimmage, not chased him out of bounds, and 
Cowboys still face a big third down play right here. I tell you, John Jackson puts a little thrill back in the game. As a quarterback, he can run. And he had some room there and was able to get outside and pick up some good yardage. Back to almost the original line of scrimmage. It's going to be third and uh, 11 yards to go now. Obviously a big play for Oklahoma State because if they have to punt, again, with the wind in their face, Nebraska will have the ball in field position. And you wonder how much better the defense can continue to play. So it's a major play for the Cowboys right here. Eight minutes, 35 seconds to go. Jackson looking pass all the way and a bunch of flags down. It'll probably be a procedure call or too much time against the Cowboys. The left tackle for the Cowboys uh, got a little excited there. Sibgiski just jumped a little bit too quick. Procedure penalty against the poke, so that will move it back another five yards, and the Cowboys will face a third and 16. I tell you, we, we keep harping on it, but they they really need to get a drive going. The defense is cannot hold up. Got a dead ball foul. Illegal procedure on the offense. Third down. The legal procedure. Sigelski moving on that left side, and that makes it third and 16 for Oklahoma State with eight minutes and 33 seconds to go in the game. Give to Jones. This is the play that went for 64 yards in the first half, but not this time. Sean takes it out over the 15 to about the 17, and Conway's going to come on and punt again. Mark Dom was a man who made the stop for Nebraska. You'll see this draw play. I think the umpire may have made the tackle here. Sean is trying to get away, and it's really slippery out there, and he's got so much body weight forward that he, it's kind of hard to keep your footing. And Conley really needs to get a boomer here. Jeff Smith and Todd Fisher back deep for Nebraska. Conway punting from his two-yard line. He punted from the end of the end zone a moment ago. John's kick is end over end, comes up at about the 48. Smith has got the ball, brings it back over the 40 to 39. There's a timeout on the field. We're back in just a moment. I'm Dave Brewer from Rock 100. They can't with news. Nebraska on the first play from scrimmage, so the ball goes down to the Oklahoma State 36-yard line, and it'll be second and six for Nebraska, and we keep talking about how well the OSU defense has played. They spot the ball at the 35, and... Cowboys have done a great job defensively, but you wonder if they can keep it up. Seven minutes and 23 seconds to go in the game. Turner Gill has Mike Rozier and Mike Shaleen behind him at the fullback spot. Gill keeps the ball. Good option play to the left, across the 30, down to the 26, and we may have a non-sportsmanlike or a late hit against the Cowboys. Well, uh, he actually threw that pa uh, flag before the end of the play, so I don't, I don't know. We'll see what the official has to say. Maybe a hold, maybe a clip. Turner Gill didn't make a wise choice. Ah, oh, tremendous break for the Cowboys. That's going to be a clip or a hold, one of the two. It is uncanny how many times Nebraska in this second half has how, had the ball. How about this? Penn State leading Alabama 14-7 in the second quarter. We will join that game in progress when this one is over with. Joe Paterno is a great We've coach. 15 yards, offense, third down. Been a, been a strange game. The Cowboys have played exceptionally well, and Nebraska, now they fumble the ball at the goal line, uh, hurt themselves there. It's something a veteran team's not supposed to do. That gives the Cowboys new life defensively. It is second and 13. Turner Gill looks to throw, has it batted away. Leslie O'Neill again. <laughs> I tell you, if you think we've called Leslie O'Neill's name a lot, you're right. Watch here as Turner Gill drops back to throw. Leslie O'Neill sticks his big hands up. Reflects the ball. And this defense is getting a standing ovation. Well, they sure deserve it. With six minutes and 59 seconds to go in the game, third and 13 for Nebraska. If the Cowboys can hold them here, Nebraska will have to punt the ball, and Oklahoma State can get it back. Turner Gill fakes to Rozier, rolling right. He's going to run to the 40. He will not have the first down, and Nebraska will have to punt. Here comes an interesting call for uh, Coach Osborne. It's a, it's a fourth and about six, and Livingston is on the field to punt. Okay, yeah, I was at the wrong mark. This defense has got, got to be commended for their game today. They've just played unbelievable. <laughs> Livingston. 
Livingston set to punt. Cowboys have no one back. He tries to hang it up so they can perhaps down it on the goal line, and they may get that done. They do again. Number 70 is a man went down there and knocked the ball down for Nebraska. That is Brian Blankenship, a reserve offensive guard. And that's happened three or four times today. They've been able to get down there. And You know, I bet the offense is probably wondering, what do we have to do to get the ball outside the 10? In this second quarter, they've started on what? The 10. Weeknights on TV9, entertainment tonight at 10.30, immediately following Newsline 9. Well, they sure need a drive they've, here. They've taken the ball on the 10 and the 1, and it's now again on the 1 right here. Six minutes, 15 seconds to go in the game. Ike Jackson remains in their quarterback. First and 10 for the Cowboys, very deep in their own territory. They played a terrific football game this afternoon. Sean Jones looking for running room, got maybe two. I'll tell you, that's scary, John. You go back in that deep eye and hand off to that tailback in the end zone, it scares me to death, but he's able to get out. Basically, right now, the Cowboys have got to have a big play, and they had a couple in the first half. They had the long pass to Chesley. They had the long run by Jones, and they need something like that here in the first quarter because Nebraska right now, even though the Cowboys have played exceptionally well defensively, Nebraska's still controlling the game. They lead 14-10 as Jimmy Johnson faces the sidelines. Five minutes, 41 seconds to go. Jackson looks to throw over the middle. The pass is complete to Harris. Maybe John Chesley will have to catch a number. I believe that's Lewis, John. Malcolm Lewis, the young freshman. As we, watch the, as we watch the playback, Ike Jackson has all kinds of time. It's just a curl pattern, and they're giving him a lot of area. They're running the zone. That was Lewis who made the play, not Harris. Alabama, Penn State now leading Alabama 17 to 7, so you're going to have a great game to join when this one is over with. 14-10, Nebraska leading Oklahoma State. Five minutes and 23 seconds to go in the game, but the Cowboys have a first and 10 out at their own 19-yard line. That time, Sean looked very tentative on the left side, trying to find the opening. Maybe it was because of the field, but certainly looking for that opening over there, couldn't find one. I tell you, it's too bad he didn't get down uh, into the secondary because John Sigilski literally wiped out Harris, the cornerback, and it was he would have been gone. Cowboys face his second and seven. The gain is three. The ball is out at the Oklahoma State 22-yard line. The clock is moving. Four minutes and 45 seconds to go in the game, and it's been a great one. No matter what happens, the Cowboys have to feel the rest of the way that they can win anybody against anybody they play against. There's the pass complete to Harris. He knocks it. I wasn't sure it hit the turf. I'm glad it did because Knox would have picked it off. Brent Clark was the man who made the hit. As we watch this, Jamie Harris has had a tough game. He's had three or four right in his stomach and uh, just drops the ball. That's tough, especially for a quarterback. So the clock is stopped now with four minutes and 35 seconds to go. Again, it's a third and seven for Oklahoma State. Cowboys with the ball at their own 22-yard line. Look for Chesley here, John. Chesley had the big pass reception in the first half that helped to set up the touchdown. Let's see. Jackson looking for Chesley. Gets the ball to Jones, who drops it, which is, in one sense, just as well. At least Ike got it off. He saved some real estate, if nothing else. I think he wanted Chesley. He did. I think he was looking for John across the middle as John had made the move from right and circled across the middle. And Chesley was open, but there was a lot of people up there knocking on Ike Jackson's door, and he could not see downfield. Four minutes, 28 seconds to go. Nebraska leading 14-10. John Conway is on to punt again. He's punted from inside the 10-yard line about five times here in the second half. That's the kind of field position the Cowboys have had. And Nebraska's had one punt. Oh. Punt hangs up very high. Smith makes the catch at his own 33-yard line, circles to the left side. Cowboys are there to knock him down, so at least they've got a little bit of field position. Well, this is what we saw last week, all week long, by this special teams. They really played well. And that, that time they did it again. Number 32 there, Charles Crawford. Football scoreboard tonight at 10-15. Ed Murray and I will have locker room reports on both the OSU-Nebraska game and the OU-Texas game tonight at 10-15, plus scores from around the country. Nebraska with the football. Of course, the Huskers would like to score, but more than that, they would simply like to run down the clock. Four minutes, 16 seconds to go. The pitch back goes to Rozier, a flag on the play, and they actually stop it before it develops. Somebody must have been moving. Now, who, whether he was drawn off or what, we don't know. But the Cohen Huskers are moving back. The, the problem now is, even though the Cowboys have got the good field position against Nebraska, 
is it Ohio State has beaten Purdue 33-22. Is it the clock now is a major factor, 413. If Nebraska is able to control it, obviously they can run it out. So they still need the big defensive play. They can't give up any more than one first down right here. Ed down on the sideline. John, uh, the coaches for OSU just turned around on the crowd. They're the biggest cheerleaders out here. They just told the crowd, let's make some noise. Back up to you. One more great defensive effort needed by Oklahoma State and a defensive unit that's put on a lot of great defensive efforts this afternoon. Rozier to the 30, Acosta to the 32. Still a little bit short of the original line of scrimmage, so it will be about second and 11. Clock continuing to move now. Leslie O'Neill again in on the tackle. Three minutes and 57 seconds to go in the game. It is fun to watch these defensive players from Oklahoma State. They're so aggressive and they do move around on that field. We have an injury on the field. Nebraska player down in front of the bench. That looks like Rozier again. Mike, Ro Mike Rozier again. Oklahoma and Texas. Now Texas has taken the lead over the Sooners just into the third quarter in Dallas. Texas 14, Oklahoma 10. You know, uh, Rozier has 20 carries for 128 yards. Texas no year of having a physical game, and this is a physical game here. There is some hitting going on. It really is a terrific, terrific game for Oklahoma State. And, and you know, a loss is a loss. Is if the Cowboys would happen to lose this one, then they, they're going to go in the locker room thinking they probably should have won, and they're, they're going to be right because they outplayed Nebraska most of the way, outplayed them defensively, outplayed them on both sides of the ball in the first half. Obviously, the offense has not been able to do much here in the second half. The defense has played great. Cowboys have got to stop them right here. Clock is moving, 3.45 to go. Gill looking to throw, right side. He's looking out there for Simmons. Now he hits the short man. Mark Moore is the man in on the stop. That's his tight end, Monty Ingebrits, and the man who made the catch out there for Nebraska. Out in the flat area, but it's still a third down play coming up. Third and six for Nebraska at the Nebraska 37 yard line. The clock is such a factor now, 319 and moving. Cowboys got to stop him right here, force him to punt. Tight end. Gill looking to throw. Tight end over the middle. He has got the first. No, he, just, he does have the first down. Just enough. David Webb was the man who was in on the stop. This tight end is the same young man that scored so many times against Penn State. He just delayed and then snuck across under the uh, linebackers and was able to pick up the first down. That was Scott Gimble uh, who made the catch for Nebraska. And that was a big play for Nebraska because it enables him to keep the drive alive with two minutes and 57 seconds to go as John Chesley watches from the Oklahoma State sideline. The clock against the Cowboys at this point. Nebraska first and 10 at the Nebraska 45. Rozier up the middle. I believe that's Smith, Smith. not Rozier. <laughs> Rozier's still down on the sideline. Smith was the man who carried up the middle for five. They all run alike, you know. And Rozier comes back in the game right now, and Smith leaves. Two minutes, 33 seconds to go in the game. Cowboys have played a great game, but unless they get a big break in the next couple of minutes, they're going to come up just a bit short against the unanimous number one team in the country. But what a game for Oklahoma State. They look for the big play right here. Two minutes, 18 seconds to go. Turner Gill is the quarterback. Cowboys showing blitz. They give it to Rogier. Swarming defense, John. All that does is put them in another big defensive play, a down. It's third and three with the clock moving. Under two minutes to go now in the game, a minute 59. Cowboys have got to stop them right here. Got to stop them here. Clock is moving, a minute 52 to go in the game now. The ball's at the Oklahoma State 48-yard line. Third and four for Nebraska. Gill's pass is complete to Simmons. He's out of bounds inside the 40, and that will be a first down. Does stop the clock, of course, on the first down and also the out of bounds with a minute 36 to go. You see Turner Gill's strong arm here, the sideline pattern. That's what the pro scouts look for is how hard they can, how well they can throw that sideline. Minute 36 to go in the game now. Nebraska trying to control things and run out the clock. Huskers lead it 14 10. First and 10 on the Oklahoma State 38 yard line. Cowboys need something big to happen. Rogier, gain of one. What a tremendous game. Uh, certainly no one except the team members and the coaches themselves would have thought it would go on like this, but what a hats off job to Jimmy Johnson and his coaching staff and 
the Oklahoma State defensive and offensive units. They played great today, but it looks like they might come up a nickel short against the number one team in the country. Clock is moving, a minute, eight seconds to go. Second and nine for Nebraska. Huskers content not to make the fumble. Simply to give the ball straight ahead to Mark Shaleen, the fullback. He's over the 35-yard line to Cowboy, about the 32. The Cowboys have got to call timeout, John. They just, they're out of time. You know, they've got to make a move here. And they're going to call timeout. Cowboys taking a timeout now to stop the clock with an even 50 seconds to go. Fifty seconds to go. The crane you see there on the left side, Allied Steel Company, we appreciate their help because we've got a camera suspended from that crane. We've been able to give you, you can see the camera there right on top of the Coca-Cola sign on top of the scoreboard. We've been able to give you some good shots from the end zone. Tom Osborne talking with his quarterback, Turner Gill. Also, special thanks to Murphy's Hamburgers here in Stillwater at 109 North Knob Block, just down the street from the stadium. Might want to go over there and have a hamburger after the game. Been a great game, too. It looks like Oklahoma State may come up a little bit short, but what a tremendous performance by the Cowboys. John, you've got to be impressed with the Cowboys played, and maybe, just maybe, you might see a little higher ranking by this Cowboy team. You know, it's interesting. Uh, I'm told now by the people down the field that they're going to try and add five seconds back to the clock, so apparently the Cowboys called timeout immediately when the play was over with, and they're going to try and put five seconds back on. Let's see. They may keep it on the field. There's some discussion about the clock. Cowboys have been very impressive. This second half, they have not had the ball in very good field position, and that even makes the defensive play even that much greater. They, they have just, it's been a, really a tremendous defensive effort. They have had their backs to the wall the entire second half, and have kept Nebraska out of the end zone. Officials still down there apparently discussing the clock. 50 seconds to go, that's what the scoreboard says. We'll see if they add some time as Jimmy Johnson paces the sidelines. He's going to be frustrated, I know, because coaches want to win, and a loss is a loss, whether it's 50 points or four points, but he's got to be proud of this team, and he has to think that over the rest of this season, he's going to have a chance to win every game that he plays because his team has just played excellently this afternoon and, again, may come up a bit short. Now, the officials come back from talking to Jimmy Johnson. Well, you just hit a... 55 seconds instead of 50, all right? We you, got one time out of you could hear Howard Rowe talking to Turner Gill and he telling him that there was 55 seconds to go and they're going to move the scoreboard clock down to zero and then start out again, I guess, with a minute and move it down to 55. You know, John, these Cowboys, uh, you've got to feel going into any game that you can win it. And this will give them that, that type of confidence. They know they can because they just played the number one team off their feet. It's not over. But they have played an outstanding game. Defense, is, our, of course, the Cowboy defense is outstanding. Well, they've done all they can do. Oklahoma State has this afternoon. Obviously, offensively, they would have liked to have done a little better in the second half. Right now, the game rests on Turner Gill's shoulders, basically. If Nebraska makes no mistakes, then Nebraska's going to win the game. They're going to take the clock down now to 55 seconds. You see a minute as Jimmy Johnson standing by there. We've got a great game for you next week. Oklahoma against Oklahoma State right here at Lewis Field in Stillwater. Our pregame show at 1 o'clock. The kickoff is at 1.30, and there you see the scoreboard clock and the message saying, help them out, fans. No one is left, I can tell you that. <laughs> Oklahoma and Texas. Now, Texas has taken the lead over the Sooners, 21-10 in the third period of that game down in Dallas. Turner Gill has his team in a third and five situation with 55 seconds to go in the game. Rosier will get it. He certainly has got it. He's not going to make the first down. Now, the clock continues to run, 49-48. Nebraska will... They may go ahead and go for it on fourth down instead of punting just to keep the ball because Oklahoma State would not have the ball in good field position. John Washington, Leslie O'Neill in on the tackle. I think they will, John. You, if you punt, you know, you're going to bring it back out to the 20, and that's only 11 yards away. Timeout on the field, and I believe the Cowboys are taking the timeout to stop the clock. They would have one left. If our record keeping is correct, they have each taken one, so the Cowboys would have, I believe, one left. Turner Gill talking with Tom Osborne. Of course, it's fourth and three, and the Cowboys don't have the ball yet. Nebraska could still get a first down right here. I tell you, the fan involvement has been super today, and I, I know next week when the Cowboys and Sooners play, there's no problem getting either, <laughs> either side of it excited. The Bedlam Series next Saturday right here at Lewis Field. Cowboys still hoping to pull it off here in the final few seconds. If they can stop Nebraska here, take over the ball, 
There won't be that much time left in the game as you see Jimmy Johnson. I know Coach Johnson would like to have those two plays back that they gave him, the one in the first half and the long reverse. That really kind of turned been it. around. The long reverse and the, and the big play in the first half, and Irving Fryer's the man who made them both. Yeah. So really, he's been the difference in one sense offensively in the game for Nebraska. Fourth and three for the Huskers, 42 seconds to go. Ball at the Oklahoma State 31. The ball is on the ground. Mark Moore, the freshman, Mark Moore, the freshman, it looked like he was injured a little bit. He stung his shoulder and he couldn't make the move. Let's see who made that play there, right there on the film. I can't tell. I believe see, it was Rodney the, Harding. Right shoulder. Rodney Harding was the man who hit him. Mark Moore picked it up. Looked like he could have run a distance, but his shoulder obviously hurt very much. You saw him shaking it. The Cowboys have got 35 seconds to go. You cannot advance a muff, and they call that a muff. That's that's why. They had already blown it dead, I believe. Though. Already blown it dead, so that's why he didn't advance it. 35 seconds to go in the game. Cowboys, first and 10 at the 36, obviously looking to throw. Ike Jackson throwing for the sideline over the head of Jamie Harris, out of smart. bounds, over the head of Chesley. That was a smart play by Ike Jackson. There was really nobody open. The middle is wide open, but that's that's where Nebraska wants them to go. They sure. want them to get into the middle. Because it takes time. They'll let them have a 10 or 15 right. yarder. They'll just play prevent defense. Second and 10 for Oklahoma State. 28 seconds to go on the game clock now. Basically, the Cowboys have got three plays. That's about what it amounts to. You know, to. John, I've never been in Stillwater at this time of the game when you couldn't see just floods of people walking out. Nobody has left. They're all waiting because they still think there's a chance. There is a chance. With 28 seconds to go, the Cowboys with the ball. Second and 10 on the 36. Obviously, Ike Jackson's got to look long. Got the time to throw out on the sideline. Intended for Jones. Was out of bounds. Sean wanted the interference call, but well, the fans wanted it. But Sean, I don't even think was looking until the last second. Contact was incidental. It certainly was not an interference call by any means. 22 seconds is not a whole lot of time. They're going to have to start looking to go to the end zone here in a minute. Third ten. I really, in, in one sense, you run out of superlatives about the way Oklahoma State has played today, but. Comes down to this with 22 seconds to go. It's third and 10 for the Cowboys. They basically have two plays to get it into the end zone, and two plays will take you about 22 seconds. So <laughs> this is it as Jimmy Johnson looks on. Jackson again will throw. Sidelines intended for Malcolm Lewis out of bounds, and the Cowboys are down to their final play. 18 seconds left. He strong armed that ball. He was throwing it in a crowd, and they, nobody had a chance for it. It was coming awful hard. What do you do here, John? You know, you, do you get the first down or go for the touchdown? They need to pick up the first. Need the first. They could send a guy out, I guess, in a short route and just make sure he's by the chains and get the first, get out of bounds, and they might still get a couple more plays off. But they have a long way to go. They've got 64 yards to go to the end zone. It is fourth and 10. 18 seconds to go. Ike Jackson rolling. He's going to throw. He's under pressure. Over the middle. The pass is complete to Lewis. First down to the 42-yard line. Do the Cowboys have any timeouts left? They do. They stop the clock with eight seconds left. Well, if anybody thought this wasn't going to be an exciting game, Jackson <laughs> gets out of the pocket here, throws it to his wide receiver, Malcolm Lewis, the fine freshman. He picks up the first. They call timeout. The ball's at the Nebraska 42-yard line. For a long pass play, they probably have only the eight seconds, which is left on the clock. Uh, if they were going to throw one to the outside, maybe they'd get two plays out of it. But... Basically, in essence, they're down to the final play. You know, I was in a game one time, John, where there was a Hail Mary pass. Maybe. 1975, the Minnesota Vikings against the Dallas Cowboys, and you were in the defensive backfield, and Roger Staubach threw it up for grabs, and Drew Pearson grabbed it. And that's what, that's what the Cowboys that's need right now. That's what they need right here is a Hail Mary. Maybe we'll see it. You look for a tip here. You know, if you throw it up like that, you look for a tip and hope that one of your team can come in under the ball. Would you maybe send everybody to the end zone and just, just throw it down there and hope somebody gets it? Well, they say in pro ball, the average play lasts four seconds. I think you're right in college. It's probably a little longer than that. They don't have a lot of time left. The long pass may just run the clock out. What a tremendous effort by Oklahoma State this afternoon. Eight seconds to go in the game. Cowboys with the ball at the Nebraska 42-yard line. It's first and 10, but that's irrelevant. They've got to get in the end zone right here. Yeah. 
Throwing it for Harris in the end zone, overthrows it. There's one second to go. We got time for one more play. There's the time, John. Now, here's the time you've got to do it. You've got to send everybody down one side and hope you tip it into your hands. It's that simple. This is it. Not much else to be said. The Cowboys have played a tremendous football game and have played the number one team in the country off their feet this afternoon, no question about it. This is a fine football team, and, and that just tells you about the character of OSU. And, They've and got you know, some. you think about it, we didn't even mention it that much. Ernest Anderson hasn't played for the last four games, and he's been injured. Sean Jones has done a great job. There's a great running back. Ernest Anderson hasn't played. Harry Roberts didn't play today. And there's nobody wants to play more than Ernest Davis. Right. Mike Hudson goes out early in the game with an injury. So the Cowboys have done it with some people on the bench. Ike Jackson, this is the final play of the game. The clock has already run out. It's he up in the it air. Grabs. It could be anybody's, and Nebraska gets it. Nebraska mm. intercepts. The game is over, ladies and gentlemen. It was a super game. Brett Clark makes the interception, and Nebraska has to feel that they got out of here getting away with something this afternoon. Brett Clark makes the interception right at the end of the game. You see Jimmy Johnson walking off. Certainly, as a coach, you hate to lose, and I know that Jimmy has to feel dejected. On the other hand, after he's had time to reflect on this, he's going to feel that he can beat anybody else he plays. Well, they're going to come back, look at the film, and they're going to say, hey, two mistakes, and we could have beat this bunch. So they're going to be up. It'll be a great game next week. Jimmy Johnson there goes across the field. The Nebraska players congratulating him. The players milling around at the center of the field. You don't always see that. You're seeing it today because there's two teams that know they played a great game against each other, and Nebraska knows it was tested to the limit.